Hello. <laughs> God, I look tired today. Whatever. Um, so I got this album thingy for my shop photos. And I said, you know what? Why not just like start putting them in while I wait for people to like filter in or whatever. So here I am. Yeah. <laughs> so dumb. I might have so many fucking <laughs> Oh god Oh no Oh no it just keeps going Oh oh boy Mm-hmm You know, um, I don't, I don't have a problem at all. There are like several in these two, <laughs> like the very few that actually only only have one. <laughs> anyway, huh? Whatever. It's just something I did while waiting. Let me actually just put these remaining ones in. Let me just go to the. And I'm like, can I even fit all of them in here? God, I don't even know. <laughs> I hope I can. But, uh... I am not... <sighs> There's so many cute pictures. Ugh, I can't. There's so many cute pictures and then there's this. I was like, that's so unattractive of them. I need it. I need it in my life. And so I got it. And... Uh, <laughs> get in there. Come on. There we go. So, how are you doing? Mom's such a sweetheart. She picked up this package for me. Also, I I'm wearing legit merch. This, this is merch. The fact that this is merch is literally just like one guy's drawing of one of the other guys. Because haha, ha, funny, he has big lips. That's the joke. As for the madam part, I'm not really sure. <laughs> because this is from one of their shows. Like their TV shows or whatever. And I haven't really kept up with that. At all, so yeah, get in there, and I need. Well, it's just like a dumb drawing. So I think it's funny though that they can like just do stuff like that. Also, this is like literally just like a bonus thing for like the. Um, special version of their newest album okay there we go i just wanted to finish those pictures the rest ones are in wrapping still so i can do those later what came with this thing that you've put over it but there that's the that's the last album version now i have one two three and Four. <laughs> Are there any new songs on the um, limited edition version? Nope. Not at all. Nope. <laughs> it's literally the same as... Eh. Yep. No, there's one less song actually. Ah, it's the good afternoon one. Okay, whatever. <laughs> it's all right. I... Why did I get it again? <laughs> the t-shirt? I don't even know anymore. Whatever, it's not that important. <laughs> What's important to me is that I got it. And also, there are like... Different, like... Things you can use here, so you can have like a different, like, cover. 
Anyways, that's beside the point. Let's just get into the game now. Because God knows I spent so much time just... Oh, God. They're marketing people? Well, it, it's gotten better. Wouldn't you believe it? Considering the, this is the thing that I got with one of the, one of the uh, singles like a few years ago. It's awful. I hate it so much. It's so cursed. I gotta hold it like sideways so that you don't get like the glare. Like that. That works. It's awful. And I also have this as a... Uh, what's it called? A poster. <laughs> That's what it's called. And... Uh, there's also another version. Where their eyes are closed. And I also have that as a poster. And it's even more cursed. <laughs> Anyways... Let me just turn down my own volume for a bit. <laughs> so many heads. Indeed. So many heads. I hope you can give us some... Oh, it's because I updated it. I was like... Uh -huh. <laughs> I was so confused for a second. Hold on. Let me just... Uh... There we go. There we go. And then this one. And there we go. Yeah. I was talking about. Yes, please, please give us more marine biology. Like, teach us more about it today. That's, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> because honestly, I love it. I love it so much. It's so great. You get so excited and it's so cute. <laughs> so yeah, we got a full acquittal for the orca. <laughs> What good, is, what good does that do when uh, we need to save Sasha now? I am sitting sideways and I don't like it. There we go. Huh? That was a big sigh, Athena. Did you lose the case? No, we won. The defendant was found not guilty. Huh? And why are you so dejected? Patty, are you being mean to her? What? Picking on the new kid? Not cool, Mr. Wright. Not cool. Wait a minute. Talk about false accusations. We were able to prove the defendant's innocence. But then Sasha got arrested instead. So that's what happened. That's too bad. So what are you two going to do now? We're going to get to the bottom of this. I don't believe for a second that Sasha did what they're accusing her of. I'm trying to, like, remember what happened. I feel like there are, like, two twists here. <laughs> I, I don't believe it either. I won't give up. Boss, let's go see Sasha and tell her we want to represent her. Right now, I imagine she is still being questioned by the police. Let's get started on the investigation first and look for proof of her innocence. Sounds like a plan. Just leave the office to me and Polly, Daddy. If there's anything I can do to help, just say the word. Thanks. If you could organize the evidence and clean the office, that'd be great. I meant anything I could do as a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to Apollo. Here you go! <laughs> Take this. That takes care of that. Time to head to the scene of the crime. Huh? There's no water in the pool. Orla, where are you? I can hear her at the bottom of the pool. Maybe there's some water down there. Orla sounds so sad. Maybe she misses Sasha. Careful there, you shouldn't get right up to the edge like that. Ah. You don't want to end up like the victim. 
Besides, the police are still conducting their investigation there. Here, don't go poking around. Detective Fulbright! Huh? Is something wrong, Miss Lawyer? You look angry. She has all the right to be. <laughs> May object to you arresting Miss Buckler! Detective, I'd like to ask you some questions about the case, if you don't mind. Go right ahead! Miss Buckler is 100% innocent, so why did you arrest her? I understand your desire to believe in her, but the fact remains that she is suspicious. Right now, there are investi investigators on the scene, so you can come in as you please. But ordinarily, a security card is required to enter this orca pool room. The victim and Sasha Buckler were the only ones who possessed this card. And yesterday, the day of the incident, the there's proof the suspect's card was used. Bam. Objection! Oh no, it froze. Somebody else could have used Miss Buckler's card. Oh my, I guess that would be one possible explanation. <laughs> Didn't I sound just like a lawyer right there? Yeah, we'd kind of be in trouble if you didn't. Except, the suspect confirmed she entered the room at the time the record states. She said she was here from 3 to 6 a.m. on July 20th. Apparently, she was just she was giving the orca pool room a good cleaning. Cleaning? In the middle of the night? Yes, she said that, the, that, that a lot of the heavy-duty cleaning is done at night. Hold on, let me just... Uh... Fulbright's theme, though, like... It does kind of slap. Like, no cap. <laughs> the suspect also admits that she was fighting with the owner before his murder. What's more, nobody saw the victim again after he met with the suspect. Objection! I, um, there must be something I can object to in there. Save your objections. Save your objections for tomorrow's trial. By the way, Detective Fulbright, do you think Miss Buckler's questioning is over? No, not yet. But I told the guy in charge to take it easy on her. Why? Is something wrong? Oops, I forget I said anything. It doesn't concern you two anyway. But it does concern us. We intend to represent Miss Buckler. What? You do? In that case, I have a favor to ask. Could you get this medicine to her? Medicine? It's like a prescription from Hickfield Clinic. No, no, don't mention Hickfield. <laughs> I spent some time at that hospital myself. You sure have. I confiscated it from her home when we were doing a search. I can't get away here, so if you could make sure she gets it, that would be great. Medicine, huh? Does Miss Buckler have some illness? Um, I think that's the kind of question you'd better ask her. And just as we trust, now we need to get back to the investigation. Damn, your phone is so rude. <laughs> we can give it to her as soon as they let us talk to her. And we have to return her calendar to her as well. If we can't see Sasha or investigate, we should question people at the aquarium. I'm okay, dude. I mean, I... I had some struggles tonight. <laughs> My stomach was killing me. So that was a lot of fun. Woke up today with like a minor headache. That was also really fun. Uh, I took some painkillers though, so I, I should be fine now. I need to do something else. Move to public danger. How are you doing? Huh? That door is open. It was closed yesterday. Well, you know what we have to do, right? Of course, boss. We sneak in and check it out.
Hey, you too. What kind of high tech? <laughs> what is this? You barge us into a person's lab without permission. We're sorry. My apologies, sir. She insisted. Don't throw me under the bus, Mr. Wright. The polite thing to do is knock and ask if you can come in. Now, start over. Yes, sir! Ah. I know the feeling. Come in. Thank you! Sorry to bother you! Now, what can I do for you? Medical problems? Um, well, yes. I'm not feeling super good at the moment. We're not making any progress on this murder investigation and... Hey, miss. Where's the patient? Don't you have your pet with you? Oh, wait a minute. That was my last job. This is the aquarium. Sir, are you okay? I was exhausted from all that questioning. I must have fallen asleep. What's with this guy? My apologies. I just woke up and I was a little groggy. I'm Dr. Herman Crabb. I'm Shipshape Aquarium's resident ver veterinarian. The first specimen of the who's now? The what's? The what now? The first of what now? Oh! You're the Dr. Crab Mr. Rhymes mentioned yesterday. And Rhymes also mentioned he hadn't seen Dr. Crab around. I wonder where he was. Basking shark. Interesting. Great basking shark. Son of a gun. This little thing doesn't let me get any sleep. He has a bird in his hair! In Orkney, it's commonly known as Pool Mother. Huh. Oh my god, look at that little bird. <laughs> Wait, is it a penguin? Is it a baby penguin? <gasps> oh, that's even better. Oh, what a cute little thing. Who is it? A penguin chick, a member of the little penguin species. She lives in my hair. <laughs> well then. Oh, you're so lucky. I wish I had a pet to live in my hair. When I hear home mother, I also immediately think of a mother of pickled dogfish. Wait, what did he say? Athena, no pets allowed in my office. You're the one that wanted it. Phoenix, you just wanted a penguin and like the last part. Aw, you're no fun. If you two don't have any particular business with me, please leave. I have to get ready to make my rounds. Back in you go, little one. Wait, we'd like to ask you a few questions to save Miss Buckler. Hold on, don't tell me you're the curious pair who defended Orla. That's right, please let us ask you a little about the case. Look at the, the little baby penguin. It's so curious. He was like, in, in back in my hair, you you go little little guy. And then he just pops right out again, and it's like I want to know what's going on. Doctor Crab, were you gone from the aquarium yesterday? That's right. I had some minor business at the su Supermarine Aquarium. S Supermarine? That's a funny name for an aquarium. The Supermarine Aquarium is the nation's biggest dolphin therapy treatment center. I go there myself. I'm friends with their dolphins. You and Apollo were talking about animal assisted therapy yesterday, weren't you? I go to the Supermarine once a month, but I live here, of course.
You live here at the aquarium? That's right, I have a sleeping bag here. And sometimes I use the nap room. I'm responsible for the health and well-being of all the marine creatures here. If any of them have a sudden medical emergency, I'm here to I'll be the here to help them. Oh my god, when you mentioned the mask, um I'm pretty sure it's like supposed to be like this uh play on like what are they called like What are those fucking... Damn it, my brain just won't brain today, I'm sorry. Those like old masks. Like the doctor masks, but they're, they have like this other name. The ones with the beak. The plague doctor, that's it! Thank you! Yes, I'm pretty sure it's like supposed to be that, but it's... Supposed to be more kid-friendly, I guess? Wow! You're kind of rough around the edges, Dr. Crab. But you care about your work. Hey, buddy. Is this young lady trying to pick a fight with me? I apologize for her, sir. She tends to be too honest. Well, you're no paragon of politeness either, apparently. The penguin chick. Can we see the penguin chick again? Stop. Don't come any closer. How? I'm sorry, she attacked you. She doesn't like anyone but me, I'm afraid. I was the first one she saw when she hatched, so she thinks I'm her parent. She targets people from my hair, so please be careful. It's an attack penguin. She's just like a little sniper, isn't she? Exactly, that's why I named her Sniper. Ha, ha, ha. It's, it's funny. It's funny because... It's, it's funny because... It's, it's it's funny because because rifle. <laughs> Her mother's name is Rifle. Sniper and Rifle, huh? What a dangerous sounding mother and daughter. So this is Rifle's daughter, which means both mother and daughter now hate me. Little penguins are generally belligerent little creatures. It's hard to get them to warm up. Warm up. But they're nocturnal, so you might be able to touch them during the day. You and Sniper get along well, don't you? Just like Sasha and Orla. But unlike Sniper and me, the two of them seem to truly understand one another. Sorry, I can't stop looking at Sniper. <laughs> Look at her! <laughs> Someone keeps me awake every night, and looks like I won't sleep until she leaves the nest. Oh my god. It must be rough for him. It's pretty cute to watch for us. Indeed, I can just watch this for hours. <laughs> I mean, sir, by now you must know her pattern. She has like a pattern. She goes there, and then she goes over there, down there, up there again. And then over there, up there, down there, up there. How you keep missing her is... Uh, <laughs> a question I'll never have the answer to. I know, right? He's like, yeah. yay, yay, <laughs> wee. <laughs> He's so cute. Can you 
tell me anything about Jack Shipley's murder? Huh. I still can't believe Jack is gone. He's the one who brought me on board. How could he up and die on me? Did you and Mr. Shipley get along? He loved all animals and fish, but I'm not like that. But I still took pride in my work as a vet nonetheless. We got along well enough as business associates. And it's thanks to him my laboratory is what it is today. It is a pretty amazing laboratory. Ah, you have discerning tastes, I see. I could tell you more about my lab if you'd like. Sorry, your face scares me. This place is just filled with, with, with electronics. What are these monitors for? Essentially, they're digital medical records for all the creatures here. I can also view the feed from the visitor's corridor security camera here. Now wait, I can see that silly mother penguin when she tries to escape. So you were the one who gave the security footage to the police. No, I wasn't here yesterday, but I did give my permission to for them to take it. And I gave them a statement about Jack and Sasha arguing. Oh, so you were the one who witnessed it. That's right. It was late in the evening of the 19th, maybe about midnight. I saw them fighting near the aqua tunnel. I don't know what their argument was about, though. Are you sure you should be talking to us about this? I'm not taking sides. I'll give information to anyone who wants it. What do you think with that? What do you what do you do with that information? At Sasha's trial, it's up to you. Wow, you're kind of rough around the edges, Doctor Crab, but you're a pretty nice guy. Hmm, huh. you are trying to pick a fight, aren't you, young lady? Aw, isn't that cute? He's easily embarrassed. Huh? Son of a gun! Are you hungry again already? And that silly mother penguin is nowhere to be found again. Would you quit peeping in my ear? According to her walkie-talkie, rifle is somewhere around the aqua tunnel. If you see her, could you bring her to me? I have to go examine some other creatures. No sweat. And this time, I'll get her to like me too. Rifle has escaped again? What is she, the Houdini of the penguin world? There's no guarantee we'll find her right away, but let's head for the aqua tunnel. Oh, it's you two, the blue and yellow duo. Oh my god, you're right. I'm very angry about what you did this morning. Uh-oh, we ran into the sea lion before our penguin. I write the truth, and I will find the truth with my own own eye. Eyes, eyes. I won't be bested by the likes of the blue and yellow duo. When did we become the blue and yellow duo? Athena will never give up. In that case, I'll leave the questioning to you, Athena. Thanks a lot, Widget. Well, at least she's a worthy adversary. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> You'll do great. You know, being the boss isn't half bad. Have you been gathering material about last year's incident ever since? That is correct. An acquaintance of the victim asked me to look into it, you see. An acquaintance of the victim? I refuse to divulge any information about my clients. The aquarium is saying that it was an accident, but I don't believe that's the truth. It seems to me that they're all hiding something. Every last one of them. Bro, I think I think it was slightly worse for the people in the actual courtroom. I didn't get it at the time, but like looking, like I watched it back, and I was like, "Oh no, her coat just fully opened." <laughs> that was the joke. Because ha ha fat, I guess, which is. Mm. No, not the best, but all right. The only thing I can think is that the killer will murder that poor girl. You don't even know if that's true or not. 
That's enough out of you, yellow girl. As I said, I'm still investigating the matter. Once I learned the truth, I plan to write a sequel to this book. Blech. She's completely taken with her investigation. I came to make a report on the anniversary of the previous trainer's death. Only to find the aquarium owner murdered. I was deeply shook, shocked. I was like shooked, shooked, shocked, shaked. <laughs> so this incident happened on the exact same date as the last one. It can't be a coincidence. Anyway, we'd better ask Mr. Plume about today's trial. So, you heard Orla singing, and that's when you realized something was happening. Correct. Oh, it's all so galling. I still can't believe the culprit used me, Norma de Plume. In any case, I swear that Killer Whale's sang song brings... That Killer Whale's song brings misfortune. First last year, and now again. A fun song like that? How could it bring misfortune to anyone? You think that barbaric song is fun? I'll never understand the tastes of children. I don't remember that swashbuckler spectacular song being all that bar barbaric. Well, if you don't remember it, I will gladly sing it for you. Oh no. Oh boy. The best ladies, land lovers hold, hand o'er all your gold. Village plunder. Then feast like kings, them's the joys of piracy. What the fuck was that? That's how it goes. Now, what is fun about those lyrics, pray tell? Okay, but why did I kind of nail her voice though? <laughs> She seemed to be enjoying it well enough. Wait a minute. That isn't the Swashbuckler Spectacular song. This is the song from the Swashbuckler Spectacular. Okay. Phoenix looks so normal. <laughs> what was that? I've never heard that song before. What? It's the song they use in the Swashbuckler Spectacular. Maybe pirates we love to sail the seven seas. Hank? You mean Hank Green? Just a bunch of scallywags who are as free as freaking be. We sim through storms and waves, all because you see. Grand treasure and adve adventures waiting just for me. But that can't be. It's completely different from the song a year ago. A vast matey's landlubber's hoe. Handor all your gold. Pillage plunder, then feast like kings. And them's the joys of pirating. Unless you show me some proof, I won't believe your song is right. Uh, she's so stubborn. Well, if it's proof she wants, it's proof she'll it's proof she'll get of the swashbuckler spectacular song. Where is it? This record contains the swashbuckler spectacular song. In it, you can see Miss Buckler and Orla singing together. Just waiting just for me. Yeah! <laughs> but I've never heard this song before. Huh? But they only sing this song during the Swashbuckler Spectacular. Well, I haven't seen the show recently. A year ago, they used a song that I sang to you. I'd recognize it anywhere. Perhaps that killer whale can sing two songs? According to Miss Buckler, Orla only knows one song. Hmm, curiouser and cur curiouser. Then, what was the song that I heard? We wish we knew. The orca sang a song she isn't supposed to know how to sing. It 
It's obvious I have a lot more investigating to do on Ship Ship Aquarium. And perhaps I better look into the Center for Dangerous Animal Control as well. The Center for Dangerous Animal Control? What's that? Can you tell us about the Center for Dangerous Animal Control? Just as the name implies, it's an organization that monitors dangerous animals. The center demanded that the aquarium put the killer whale down a year ago. Put her down? But the aquarium owner refused their demand, saying it was an accidental death. But I hardly think a persistent organization like that would just give up and go away. I'm quite sure the power of money helped convince them. What makes you think that? Once a month, the owner and the vest disappear from this aquarium. And I came to find out that, each time, a large amount of money was being paid out. Oh, and you think the money was going to the Center for Dangerous Animal Control? I'm looking into it now. You'll have to wait until my book comes out to see. In any case, I can't catch that man out on anything. But that veterinarian is not to be trusted. Dr. Herman Crabb, there's still so much we don't know about him. Well, I don't see Rifle here. What do you want to do next? I think we'd better stop by the office and discuss a plan of action. Three, two, one! Ta-da! Wow! You pulled Mr. Nick's cell phone from your magic panties! That's a main thing! <laughs> So for Tracy's magic show, come back and see me next time. Great job, Trucy. You never failed to impress. I have no idea how you did that either. We're back. Oh, Pearls. Stopping by for a visit? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Nick. Are you missing something? Uh, thanks. I'm out of the old magic panties, huh? How was the investigation going, Mr. Wright? We don't have much time, but we didn't get a chance to check out the crime scene yet. I see. Oh, speaking of checking out the crime scene, Daddy, you should bring your forensics kit with you. Fingerprint powder to check for prints, and luminol testing fluid to look for blood. Oh, Trucy, I didn't know you had stuff like that, too. <laughs> I got them from a detective friend of mine. Mr. Nick, I'd like to help you with your investigation. Can I borrow your forensic kit? I feel bad making you work when you're supposed to be here having fun. I don't mind, and I'd like to see Rightful again too. If you have anything for me to do, I'd like to help too. Yeah? Thanks. I'll be sure to ask you if anything comes up then. Well, I'll be right here, hanging around, watering Charlie. If you th think of anything. <laughs> I appreciate that, Apollo. I've got some good kids here. I've got some good kids? Alright team, let's let oh Alright team, let's do our best. I have faith we can save Sasha all together. It sure feels nice to be part of a great group like this. I just want to say that I really love working here with all of you fabulous people. Thank you for bringing me aboard, boss. It's the same here, Athena. She's so earnest. She's making me blush. Okay. Let's all run over to the aquarium. I hope I can be of some use with the forensic and kids. Hey, wait up, you two. They left without me. And just as we trust, good timing. We're done with the crime scene for now. And we're just about to examine the show stage. Marlon Rhymes helped with the cleaning, so we've got to go talk with him. I thought he'd be more tip tight lipped than this, but hey. You're welcome to look around here now, if you'd like. Thank you. I think we'll do just that. Oh, by the way, if you want to examine the bottom of the pool, I recommend using that hoist over by the ladder to get down there. That crane-like thing hanging from the ceiling, right? Got it. 
Just stand on the ladder platform and the police guard will operate it for you. Thanks. Why couldn't the pool be less deep? Well, good luck to us both. In justice we trust. Now that Detective Fulbright's gone, we can do anything we want here. The guard is still here, so keep your voice down when you say stuff like that, Athena. It looks like the water was drained for the police investigation. It seems kind of sad somehow without the water. And something that was there before is suddenly gone. It has a psychological effect. Like for example, if all the magic props in the office were suddenly put away neatly. I don't think that's ever gonna happen as long as Trucy continues to practice magic. Well, she might not always be interested in magic, you know. She's at the age when young women start to worry about their future. Listen, I've said it before and I say, I'll say it again. Ace attorney logic, don't question it. The same thing happened to me and I ended up becoming a lawyer. I'm pretty sure Trucy will always be interested in magic. Yeah, it's kind of in her blood, you know. Let's use the hoist to go down to the bottom of the pool. It's cold anxiety. A map, a compass, and a spooky skull-shaped rock. Marla's room is filled with pirate pizzazz. But that skull rock seems out of place. It doesn't go with the other things. Yeah, it does seem pretty weird to have a big skull rock next to your desk. Maybe Sasha wasn't finished arranging the set. When it comes to Orla, Sasha doesn't seem like the type to leave something half done. Her state of mind when she put it, put it there. That could be the key to this mystery. And I bet it's a mystery I can solve. Never mind that mystery, let's get back to the investigation. They call this the captain's cabin on TV. Every night, by the light of the lantern, Orla pours over her treasures. Hmm, sounds more like a miserly housewife going over the family finances. Hardy, hardy, har. Now I get the notification that you're alive. It's been almost 50 minutes. Wow, look at all that treasure. Those jewels and that crown are huge. They sure are. I guess everything is size large around here. No, everything is size Orla. I stand corrected. Of what now? This must be Orla's bedroom. There's even a sofa and everything. Orla, congratulations on your non guilty verdict. But we have bad news. Oh, yeah. It doesn't sound like it has anything to do with food. It just sounds strange. Now Sasha has been arrested instead. Orla seems sad. I'm sure she is. I can sense the sadness filling her heart. Don't worry, Orla. We'll save Sasha. I think Orla's wishing us good luck. Orla really seems to understand what we're saying. She can't understand our words, but I bet she can understand our hearts. Is this a good time to get started, Mr. Nick? Huh? Started with what? This is the crime scene, right? So this should be the perfect place to start forensicking. She wants to use the forensics kit so badly. She's practically beaming. I mean, same though, to be honest. Okay, let's do it. Forensicking it is. Hooray! I get to help! Alright, we'll need these. Um... What's with the glasses, Mr. Wright? It's not like they're a fashion statement. We need them to see if there is any blood. Sorry, I'm just imagining him wearing those glasses. Can I find some similar ones? What 
I'm just imagining Phoenix with those glasses. I love it. <laughs> to see if there's any blood. All right, Pearls, you spray the luminol wherever I need it, okay? Got it, Mr. Nick. I won't miss an inch. Got your glasses on, everybody? Good. Now to check out the bottom of the pool. Oh, cool. I can just do this now. Look, I see something. You found similar glasses? Send them to me. I want. <laughs> if your deductions are correct, boss, I guess this luminal reaction means that the victim hit this skull-shaped rock when he fell and fell to his death. I guess so. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Link permission, sure. Why not? Where did you find it, actually? Well, not quite. I can take a look on, uh, I guess, AliExpress or something. I probably will have something. <laughs> oh no! I'm so sorry! I got some on Orla by mistake! Calm down, Pearly. It's okay. Look, there are luminal reactions on Orla too. The poor thing was bleeding yesterday. The luminol must be showing her injuries. Wait a minute. Mr. Plume said the blood disappeared when Orla put on the hat. Huh? So, shouldn't her injuries be under her hat? If this blood isn't from Orla's injuries, then what could it be? I guess that's about it for inside the pool. And let me just get a quick photo of to remember the occasion by. It's not every day we get to see the bottom of an aquarium pool. Oh, nice. You're running out of those 60 seconds. <laughs> Isn't that just like your basic, like, round glasses, though? 
<laughs> sexy sexy glasses. I like how we use the word sexy as if we have any idea what it actually means. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, please. Do I have... Do I have these? Or is it these? Or is it not these? Okay. Eh. Oh, you know what? Just bring the lights with me, because why not? Just might as well. Here we go. Closing. <laughs> Uh, so dumb. There you go. Nice. Yeah, that's a good shot. I wonder where the numinal reactions were. Yay! My first collaborative work with Pearly. Huh? I hear something. Morla? Moss, something is wrong with Orla. What? You're right. She's listless and she's sinking. I think it's because of the luminol I got on her. What do we do, Mr. Nick? We can't do anything for, our, for her ourselves. Let's get Dr. Crab. I'll run and get him. What's Orla's condition? She's listless and sinking. Maybe she's unconscious? The pool is drained. Son of a gun, who did this? She'll drown unless we do something. Here, give me a hand. Huh? Us? No, I meant the steel samurai. Of course you! Just help me! What? Alright. What do you want us to do? There's no time to fill the pool to get her up to the top. Get the orca stretcher. It's a piece of black cloth with a skull and crossbones on it. Looks like a pirate flag. When the stretcher is ready, press the hoist button. Okay, we're on it. Uh, this thing? So this pirate flag is a stretcher for the orca, huh? So Hood? Edward? Edward? Oh yeah, I love Edward. <laughs> Sorry, I'm bullying you. We can't use it with all this stuff on it. Let's clear it off. <laughs> Jeez, are hard. Good. Now push the hoist button and lower the stretcher. The control panel is on the wall to your right. That's, that's the wrong right. <laughs> This must be the button to move the hoist. Dr. Crab, the stretcher is ready. It's on the right. <laughs> Good, let's get it under Orla. I'll take it from here, stand back. I have to treat her immediately. Hmm, there's something in her stomach. There, I got it all out. Will Horla be alright, Dr. Crab? Yes, she'll be fine. She's just sleeping now. Workers are mammals. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just waiting for Bengi to go off. Or are they actually mammals? <laughs> it's 
so they won't die if they're out of the water for a little while. But their own weight puts stress, stress on their organs, and their skin starts to dry out. I put some of my special handmade cream on her skin as an emergency measure. Feel better soon, Orla. Oh, if only I hadn't gotten that luminol on her. Luminol? Nah, no problem there. That stuff just washes right off. Orla's condition has nothing to do with you, young lady. Really? Then what is wrong with Orla? I don't need to share that information with you people. It's none of your business. Uh, sus much? I have to get back to my round, so I'll leave the rest of the crew. Please keep an eye on Orla while I rouse up some crew members. Dr. Crab sure is acting funny. He seems to be hiding something. Maybe we should check on Orla's condition before the staff gets here. Sneak a look at the orca. We should check out the contents of Orla's stomach. I guess. Hey, I see something mixed in with the fish. It looks like a medicine capsule. There's something written on it. I think it says... Three Z's. What would- what would it be doing in Orla's stomach? Wait, are orcas like marine mammals or not? Or is it the same thing you talked about last night? Listen, I'm, I'm confused. I'm not very good at biology. <laughs> Where have we seen three Z's before? Sleepy Z Z Z. <laughs> You know, the thing that was given to, like, several people in Investigations 2? Because of the clarity, I guess. <laughs> wow. I wonder what kind of medicine it is. Let's ask Dr. Crab. It might have something to do with Orla's condition. Maybe we'd better not ask. He must have noticed it himself, yet he didn't mention it. I think he's hiding something about Orla's condition. If we show him the capsule, he might try to take it away from us. Yeah, I guess he was acting pretty sketchy. Okay, let's look into it ourselves then. Good idea. When we get back to the office, we can ask for Apollo's help. I guess that wraps up our investigation here. Marla still isn't fully awake yet. I can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. <laughs> oh, here comes some staff. Looks like they're going to put Orla back into the pool. And I guess they're going to fill the pool back up. I bet that will take a while. Well, I guess we can leave Orla in the staff's capable hands now. Right. So where to now? Let's head to the show stage next. If we're lucky, the police will be done with the place. So this is, this is where they hold the swashbuckler spectacular, huh? What? Aren't you a biology major? <laughs> Looks like the police are done with their work here. Hey, it's you lawyers. How could you let Sasha get arrested? 
Didn't I ask you to take care of her? We're sorry we couldn't prevent her from getting arrested. But as her lawyers, we'll do everything we can for her. Sorry, I got upset. If there's really any- if there's anything I can do to help Sasha, just say the word. Marlin, you can trust in Mr. Nick. I'm going to do what I can too with this forensic ink kit. I'm going to cover this whole area with forensic ink. Not a girl, small fry. You can have free reign of this place. I want to check this place out, but I'd better talk to Mr. Rhymes too. Okay, let's talk to Mr. Rhymes then. I hear you helped Sasha with the cleaning, Mr. Rhymes. Well, not really helped. I was just taking care of the orca here while she cleaned. Sasha felt bad for making Orla stay up so late, so she asked me to give her a snack. It was a little bit less than her ordinary meals, but she seemed satisfied. Oh yeah, and I put Orla on the transport stretcher too. Transport stretcher. See that hoist up there on the right? The stretcher can be suspended for from it. The stage shows us... The stage show is right next to the orca pool room. We use the hoist to move the orca or cargo between the two areas. So the rail we saw in the orca pool room runs all the way here, huh? Why? Did you want to take a ride? Aerial investigation, huh? Sounds good to me! No, no, that's okay. I like my investigations on sweet terra firma. Actually, the hoist can only be operated from the orca pool room. Oh, that's right. I remember seeing the hoist control panel in there. So I'm sorry, but I can't give you a ride without somebody on the other end. No need to be sorry. Ooh, touch that bullet. It's almost as if Phoenix has, um... Is scared of heights. <laughs> if it wasn't Miss Buckler or Orla, who else could have killed Mr. Shipley? Well, I know Sasha is innocent, but I'm not so sure about the Orca. What? But we proved her innocence in court this morning. But a few days ago, that Orca attacked Sasha right here in the show pool. I saw that Orca take Sasha's body into her mouth and squeeze her chest. Her chest? They were probably practicing the lifesaver trick. But Sasha was being crushed so bad, she couldn't even blow the whistle. Oh, man. I wanted to help her right away, but... I hate to admit it, but I froze. I... I'm a weak man. I can't protect anyone. I doubt there are many people who would pit themselves against an orca. Everybody tried to talk her out of it, but she wouldn't give up on practicing. When we said Orla could kill her, she said she trusted Orla. Yeah... Well, everybody else seems to think Orla is a killer. How can you trust a creature that can't speak? You can't even know what it's thinking. But with orcas and dolphins, you can have communication of the heart. Was that all Orla wanted to do with him? Let me see. Examine, okay. Ooh. <laughs> We saw the same device in the orca pool room too, huh? Yeah, we used it to lift Orla when she was in the stretcher. In the show, Sasha makes her grand entrance by hanging from this thing. Oh, we should think of a cool grand entrance for us too. I've always wanted to burst into the middle of somebody, is, somebody else's trial with a loud bang. I've always wanted to crash in through the ceiling. I bet that would really knock the, their, the socks off the judge in the gallery. Uh... This aged like milk. Because this is before the courtroom bombing. <laughs> Just what exactly was this girl learning while she was in Europe? Da, da, da. Okay, I'm curious about this. There's <laughs> a skeleton drift! <laughs> it's just a prop. Were you really scared? A little bit. By your screaming. Is this skeleton an enemy but defeated by Orla's pirates? No, he's an informant named the Skeleton Kid. A dashing, spirited character. Neither friend nor foe. So 
You're saying he's alive in the show. Look at this pool. It's huge. So this is where they do the Sposhbuckler Spectacular. Pool has the same depth as the orca pool. Huh. You practice the tricks in the orca pool and then do the real show here. Are you interested in the Swashbuckler Spectacular? Oh, of course! I've only seen it on TV, though. Well, I'm new here, so I've never even seen it once. Dina is a big fan. She watches the recording over and over. I love this show in the ocean. Standing here it makes me feel like I'm at the beach. Especially with it open to the sky. You can even hear the sound of the surf nearby. Why don't you take a dip in the pool? Really? I can? In that case... What are you talking about? You can swim here. You were just joking. Right. Of course, I was just joking too. Don't tell me she was actually going to do it. Okay, but why can't we swim there though? That was a strange thing. This colorful sign. Did Miss Buckler make it? Miss Bucker? Wow, how did you know? Yeah, that sign is for the new show. Before she went to clean, she painted it and left it to dry. She told me to keep an eye on it while I was taking care of the orca. Huh? Isn't that the school rock there on the right? Mr. Rhymes, is the school rock a part of the set for the new show? Yeah, I guess so. If they were going to use it in the show, then what's it doing in the orca pool? Sign is so eye-catching, with all those twinkling stars. I think they're supposed to be starfish. It's for a pirate show, after all. Hmm, a few of them look more like leaves to me. Sasha put so much effort into making this sign for the new show. I wonder she was mad about what had happened. Huh? I wonder what he's talking about. I better ask. Sure. We've examined pretty much everything here, but... But? What? Okay, let me just talk to him, I guess. You say Miss Buckler was mad. Why does it just say Miss Bucker? Was it because of the new show? Ugh, in my big mouth. Okay. But you never heard it from me. It was a rumor that a captain... But the captain wasn't gonna let Sasha be in the, in the new show. What? Why not? I don't know. It was just a rumor. I didn't know, I don't know if it was true. So Mr. Shipley was going to do the show all by himself. I can't even imagine the show without Miss Buckler. It would be like, where's the beef? Is she trying to say it would be like bones without any meat on them? Sasha wanted to go back to the old swashbuckler spectacular. But now that the captain's gone, who knows what's gonna happen with the show. Mr. Nick, I found some peculiar fingerprints. Pearls! I almost forgot she's been forensic and for, for me all this time. Oh, what's that? Prosecutor Blackwill, what are you doing here? Just some business to attend to. They let you out like that? Without, like, a chaperone or something? Like, okay. Oh, okay, never mind. Prosecutor Blackwell insisted, so I brought him along to get a little ex exercise. Is it business with us? 
No, not you. My business is with that animal keeper there. Marlon Rhymes. You will be a witness for the prosecution tomorrow. You gotta be kidding! Why would I want to testify against Sasha? What you want does not matter. Now, come along. But if I leave, who's gonna feed the orca? The other animal keepers are too scared to go near her now. Um, maybe I can help. I'm concerned about Orla's health, and this way I can stay close and look after her. I can feed her and do a telecast too if you need me to. I'll do anything to help. Sounds like Pearls wants to do something nice for Orla and make sure she's okay. Cute. Small fry. Are you tripping? That orca is dangerous, you know. <laughs> I'll be fine. I'm just happy to help. Oh, but I don't have a TV phone. I won't be able to contact you if I have to do a telecast. Marlin, may I please borrow yours? What? Sure, small fry. I need them for you. Especially when you're going out of your way to help like this. I don't know if I'm gonna testify, but I guess I can at least hear what the police have to say. Thanks for your cooperation. Now justice will be served. With a strategy meeting. Mm -hmm. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's get back to our investigation. Hmm. How sad. The police have already investigated all there is to investigate. Your efforts are a waste of time. Thing we do to try to save try and save our client is a waste of time, Prosecutor Blackwell. Today, the Orca, tomorrow, Sasha Buckler. You intend to save them both? Hmm. <laughs> you say you believe in your clients, but isn't money really your true motivation? Why not admit you're only doing this for your own benefit? I could understand that much more readily than your empty righteous talk. Our own benefit? That's not what we're doing it! Now, Athena, try not to let him get to you. All right, we shall be off, Prosecutor Blackwell. In justice, we trust. Phoenix is getting paid. I was thinking the same thing. I also thought it said he's getting laid, and I, I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've never been so insulted. Be right back. I need some water to wash away the anger. Uh oh, she hit Prosecutor Blackwell with that water. He doesn't seem to care, though. Hmm. I guess prosecutors these days are more about harsh monochrome than fancy frills. Oh, wait. What about those peculiar fingerprints you said you found, Pearls? <laughs> I'll tell you all about them. Pearls! So, tell me about this big discovery you made. Well, I don't know if it's a big discovery, but... Oh god, sometimes this chat just, it just turns way too much. <laughs> it's late enough. <laughs> I found some odd fingerprints on the pool ladder over there. Okay, so what's so peculiar about them? Well, they're on the left side of the ladder, but they're right-hand prints. Wouldn't a person usually hold the left side of a ladder with their left hand? Plus, I think they were made from above by grasping the ladder with the right hand. Uh... What in the... Mufasa is this? you mention it? That is strange. I wonder whose prints they are. I compared them with the prints on file and they turn out to be Marlin's. How did he manage to leave prints in such an awkward position? So, Mr. Nick, was I helpful? Yes, you were. Thank you very much, Pearls. I don't know if they're related to the case yet, but I'll keep them in, them in mind. <laughs> I bet Detective Fulbright doesn't know about these prints. I imagine their search wasn't as thorough here as it was at the crime scene. I don't even remember. I remember that we get thrown for a loop like at least twice. <laughs> That's what I remember. You're 
probably right. I'm sure they checked everything at the actual crime scene. But I guess they can't do forensics on every inch of the rest of the aquarium. And we could, thanks to Pearly. And now we have a new piece of information. Oh, you're embarrassing me, Athena. Rightful! Hey, it's Rightful. We gotta catch her. Don't worry, she's being a good girl right here on my lap. <laughs> well, I'm glad she's been found. I forgot we were looking for her, actually. Yeah, thanks again to Pearly. We get it. We get it. You want to... You you want to be friends with the penguin, but it doesn't want to be friends with you. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. Oh, we're almost halfway, I guess. I think somebody's jealous. Well, I think I'll go talk to the staff about Orla. All right, good luck, Pearls, and thanks again. Yeah, I, 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 I understand her pain. Well, I guess we're done with things here. What do you want to do next? How about if we have Apollo check out our mystery evidence? Oh, that's right. We haven't done that yet. Good idea. Let's stop by the office. Oh, you're back. How is the investigation going? It's going pretty well, but there are still things we need answers to. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Apollo, it's your lucky day. Apollo, there's something I'd like you, your help with. You have work for me? What is it? Did you have this capsule checked out? I think it's some kind of medicine. Sure thing, Mr. Wright. I'll go to a hospital or something and have somebody take a look. Let's see, I'm pretty sure the closest one is Hickfield Clinic. Stop mentioning that fucking clinic. Good luck, Apollo, and thanks. I wonder if they'll let us see Sasha now. It has been quite a while. Let's stop by the detention center and see. We have something to deliver to her too, don't forget. Alright, boss. Chin up. We have to lift Sasha's spirits. <laughs> I like your enthusiasm. Ahoy there, me hearties! Thank you for coming, Arr. I be in good spirits, worry not about me. <laughs> they got lesbians giving gays eggs. She's trying to cheer us up. Well, that went over like a lead balloon. I was trying to make up for all your trouble. Maybe the two of you need to take it easy. I guess they both had the same idea. It's so funny because, especially with penguins, there, there, there's so much like homosexuality in penguins, or I guess like homo romanticism. Is that more like it? I don't know. But but still, no, being gay is, is not natural. <laughs> of course not. Okay, anyways. <laughs> we came to let you know that we can take on your defense, if you'll have us. What? Cute. Is something wrong? Why is she hiding from us? Prosecutor Blackwell said that you two would abandon me. But here you are, to my rescue. That's why I'm so happy. Oh yeah, lions too. Fuck. It sounds like she's crying back there. Of course we wouldn't abandon you. Oh, Sasha, don't cry. Maybe the two of you need to take it easy. Great, now I have crybabies in stereo.
That sounds adorable. Flora, give her permission. Give her link permission. Yeah, I've heard about that, and it's just like, damn, those those tourists freaky as fuck. <laughs> like, who the fuck has sex in front of a lion? Actually, two lions. I guess. You wrote permit with two T's. Okay, I'm alright now. Thank you for taking on my case. Also, you didn't write her name correctly. Disturbing content. Pretty glad to do it. There we go. Can't even let the fucking horses be gay. Damn. Well, now that you're smiling again, we have a few questions to ask you. On the night before the murder, did you enter the orca pool room alone? <laughs> I'm an adult. Well, I mean... Technically, yeah. <laughs> but you're still in your late teens, so... That's right. On July 20th, from 3 to 6 a.m., I was there cleaning and organizing. I need to sneeze. I need to... I need to sneeze. <laughs> the captain and I were actually supposed to clean together starting at 4 a.m., but... We got in a fight. I couldn't face him, so I went an hour early and started cleaning. Oh my god, that's so cute! Animals, man. What does the orca pool room cleaning involve? Well, first we have to move Orla to the show stage pool before we get started. Mr. Rhymes mentioned he took care of Orla in the show stage pool. After Orla was moved, I drained the pool and rearranged the equipment and props. And did the captain ever show up? Oriam came and went, but he never showed. I bet he was mad at me. I wish I'd apologized to him instead of being all prickly and angry like a scorpion fish. I'm glad we could prove Orla's innocence, but we didn't know you would get arrested. <laughs> as long as Orla is safe, I'm happy. I'm so glad I found you two. You guys are the best. I'm glad you found us too. You're the best, Sasha. I never imagined Orla's tricks would ever be used to commit a crime. Could you tell us more about the lifesaver trick? Yeah, sure. There's a little speaker on the captain's clothes and on the training, training dummies. That speaker can emit sound waves when a trick command is issued with the whistle. Orla uses the sound waves as a guide to find the person she's supposed to rescue. I see. Does anybody else know about how that trick works? The entire crew knows about it, but it takes quite a bit of practice to be able to command her the lifesaver trick. It wouldn't be easy to do for anybody who wasn't a trainer. And that's why they suspected Sasha. And Orla can only perform one trick per signal. In other words, she can't perform two tricks at a time. Wait. So she can't do the singing trick and the lifesaver trick at the same time. So what was that song Mr. Plume heard? Oh, Mr. Wright! I just remembered! 
We have something to return to Sasha. Oh yeah, you're right. I have it right here in evidence. We have to give Sasha that item that Detective Fulbright gave us too. There are two things? Detective Fulbright asked us to give you this medicine. Arr, that bilge sucking blackguard had the spine to send me a gift. Dread pirate no stash, don't stand there gaping like a weak little minnow. Have at you. Oh, a real swashbuckling battle. Arr, if it be a fight you want, a fight you shall have. Could you two please not drop into show mode out of the blue? Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, I'll take that medicine. Oh, the calendar. She's acting kind of funny. What's the medicine for, by the way? Ugh, well, I guess I can keep it a secret from you two. I... I suffer from a heart condition. A heart condition? Then you'd better get to a hospital right away. Take it easy, Athena. She's in detention, remember? Don't worry, it's not that serious as, as it sounds. They can fix it with surgery. Not serious? A heart condition is a heart condition. Don't tell us not to worry. Yeah, I'm sorry. The captain was just as mad as at me the day before yesterday. We both got so worked up at one point. It was like a sharky-shark situation. Ooh, that sounds scary. Do you mind if I ask more about that fight? Why were you arguing with Mr. Shipley? The captain knew about my heart condition, and he was worried about me. So he said he wouldn't pull me in the new show. Put me in the new show. See? I'm not in the new flyer. Oh, you're right. It's just Orla and the new adversary, Red Stash. I was so upset and frustrated. I was still crying when I went to do the cleaning. And I cried for quite a while before I drained the pool, too. But then, you know what? Orla did a trick to try and cheer me up. Heart condition. She acted out the scene where she defeats the giant octopus by spiking a ball on it. She spiked that ball so hard, she even ended up breaking off one of the octopus's legs. What a dramatic way to cheer up a friend. So that's why we argued, because he wasn't going to put me in the new show. But I was determined to be in the show yesterday. It was July 20th, you see? The anniversary of the death of the trainer before me. Azura Summers. The person Norma de Plume wrote about in her book. I wanted to explain to the audience that it was an accident, not murder. That's why I wanted... That's why I needed to be in that show so bad. So during the cleaning, I moved the skull rock to the orca pool. What? But why? It was the key prop. I figured the new show couldn't go on without it. I thought they'd be forced to switch back to the old show. Wow, that was pretty extreme. So Sasha moved the school rock to the orca pool at the time of the cleaning. And if there's blood on that rock, then that must mean that the victim's death occurred after the rock was moved. Around what time did you finish up the cleaning? It was about 6 a.m. So that places suspicion on whoever met with the victim after 6 a.m. Hold on, let me just, uh... This is your calendar, isn't it, Sasha? Huh? No, mine's at the aquarium. Yeah, Mr. Rhymes said he found this one in the nap room. Huh, I didn't think anybody else at the aquarium used the calendar like that. The owner of this calendar had a meeting scheduled with the victim. This mystery person might be the killer. We'd better find the calendar's owner. There we go. So Asura Summers was the trainer before you. That's right. She was a year older than me. She taught me all about how to command Orla. But Asura and Sasha were like sisters to one another. She was the one who taught me the signals for the singing and lifesaver tricks too. After she died, I swore on this charm. 
I vowed to become a great trainer someday, just like Asura. What is that charm? It's a keepsake to remember Asura by. I, she always wore it. She told me once that she and her boyfriend had matching charms. I never found out who he was, so I couldn't give this one to him. I've had it ever since. You're keeping the memory of Miss Summers alive. Captain always carried around a memento of Asura too. Her walkie-talkie. Huh? Did the victim have a walkie-talkie on him? Maybe I should show Sasha the victim's photos and see what she has to say. The victim didn't appear to have a walkie-talkie with him the day at the time of his death. Huh? But I talked to the captain on this walkie-talkie before I started the cleaning. But there's no walkie-talkie shown in these crime scene photos. I don't understand it. The captain always kept that walkie-talkie with him. Maybe the culprit took it away. Hmm, maybe. But what would be the point of that? I better organize the data I have on the victim in the court record. The captain always kept that walkie-talkie by his side. It was the walkie-talkie Asura used right up, to, right up until her death. In the middle of the show, the orca brought Asura off to the surface in her mouth. She left tooth marks in Asura's walkie-talkie. The captain said she, he always kept that walkie-talkie with him so he'd never forget. So the walkie-talkie was really important to the victim. But now the captain is dead too. I'm the only one left who can protect Orla from the ship's doctor. Protect Orla from the ship's doctor? I wonder what Sasha means. What do you mean by protect Orla from the ship's doctor? You know, Herman Crab, ever since the accident a year ago, he's been completely different. When Asura died, he said he was going to euthanize the orca. Before that, he always used to say that euthanizing animals was, was a despicable act. Euthanize the orca? That's horrible. They all thought that Asura's death was the orca's fault. Nobody believed in her but me. The ship's doctor always keeps poison to euthanize the orca with on hand. And if Orla had been pronounced guilty in yesterday's trial, he would have used it. Just going to put her down right away? Wait, how old is he? He's 40. She seems to be in like, her 20s. Considering that Sasha is 22, so... But maybe, I don't know. Oh, she was! You pay attention to where I don't. That ship's doctor was close with both the captain and the Zura, you know? I think he hates Orla. I guess I'd better look into Dr. Crab a little more. Boss, let's go see Dr. Crab. I was just thinking the same thing. We have a lot of questions to ask him. Oh, it's pearls. And Rifle. What are you doing here? Rifle came in here, so I followed her. Oh, that's right. You were supposed to deliver Rifle to him. I for completely forgot. Oh, Rifle! What are you doing? Stop that! You silly mother penguin. What if you injured my spectacular genius brain? Dr. Crab, are you alright? Huh? Oh, it's you people. I see you brought Rifle for me. Uh, Rifle was really laying on to you. Well, she hates me because she thinks I took her baby away from her. The Lily? Yes! <laughs> Gee, Rifle looks so happy. Is she actually playing with Sniper? Ugh, stop all this cacophony. The biological parent and the caregiver parent locked in a struggle over the child. Do you think you could hold this silly mother penguin down for me? Alright, 
I will try. Um, what are you doing? I think Rifle just threw something up. Oh, I'm getting food for Sniper out of Rifle. Mother penguins stock up food for their babies in their stomachs. They break it down in there so that it's easier for the baby to eat. Wow, you sure know a lot about animals. You're trying to pick a fight with me again, aren't you, young lady? Yes, I know a lot about animals. I am a licensed veterinarian. Hmm, Rifle certainly is in a bad mood, even for her. Is Rifle okay? Yawn. I'm checking her now. Oh sweet, we're almost finished with this part. Girl in strange outfits. Could you turn rifle over on her back, please? An important time bird's nest. Alright, rifle. I'm just going to turn you over, okay? Hmm, what's this? The bottom of her feet are pink. What kind of sickness is that? We have to get her to a doctor. Athena. He is a doctor. Yummy. Athena, get a hold of yourself. Dr. Crab is a veterinarian, remember? just something she stepped in by the looks of it. It's her stomach that's the problem. There's still something in there. Here we go. Hmm. Looks like she swallowed something odd. I know this penguin will eat anything, but where did she pick up something like this? Son of a gun. I'll have to talk to Marlin about her care. Dr. Crab! Have you seen what was in Rifle's stomach? Huh? Please be quiet. I'm busy right now. Busy? But you're just staring at that weird machine. I'm checking to see when Rifle ingested the foreign object. He just keeps looking at that machine. He won't even glance our way. Now I'm really curious to know more about this monitoring, monitoring system. Tell us about the monitoring system you have here. It's a collection of electronic medical records for all the creatures here. With this system and the camera footage, I can monitor monitor, monitor the creatures 24-7. I won't tell you any more than that. It's private company business. Medical records are usually just history of past medical exams and data. I never heard of any that could monitor 24-7. Good point, Mr. Lawyer. I can see there is no fooling you. Why would you want to fool me? Ah, our favorites. This guy's going to be a tough nut to crack. I have my reasons. Let me just do the other one first, the charm. Huh, this looks like the charm Sasha had. Dr. Crab, do you know anything about this charm? Charm. Hey, leave that alone. That belonged to Azura. What was a sewer's charm doing in Rifle's stomach? That's odd. And Sasha was telling us about the charm earlier. Sasha said that she had a sewer's... She had a sewer's charm. But that charm is still at the detention center. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't Sasha say a sewer and her boyfriend had matching charms? This second charm must be the one that belongs to a sewer's boyfriend. Dr. Crab, is it possible this charm belongs to a sewer's boyfriend? I refuse to talk about such personal de details of the deceased. Subject closed. Alright, he sure is touchy when it comes to a sewer. Asura Summers, yesterday was the anniversary of her death, wasn't it? That's right, she was killed by the Yorka. Do you really think Orla killed her? I... I don't believe it. Who can say if the Orca did it on purpose? But the fact remains that she killed Azura. I was right there, the day of her death a year ago. I saw the Orca bite Azura with my own eyes. But... 
Is that really the whole truth of what happened? I guess only Orla knows what really happened, both a year ago and this time. Take that! I want you to tell me about the monitoring system here. You don't let up either, do you, Mr. Lawyer? They're just electronic medical records and feeds from security cameras. With these, I can monitor all of the animals 24-7. And I say that's not true. I have proof that you can't monitor the animals 24-7 with the system. Ah, security footage. Take that! The security camera doesn't begin recording until 10 a.m. If that's the case, how could you possibly monitor the animals 24-7? Okay, you got me. Guess that was a pretty weak explanation. You're right, I can't monitor the animals 24-7. But if I see anything unusual on the camera feeds, I can spring to action right away. And if I can examine an animal, I can usually tell exactly what, the, what is going on with them. How? He's really confident in, in his abilities. But I still say you can't do that 24-7. I'm here at the aquarium most of the time. And I can go anywhere at any time to examine an, an animal. Anywhere? I say that's not true either. I have proof that there's, place, there's a place you can't go. Oh, I know this one. I know this one, actually. I actually know this fuck. Mother trucker. Take that! The only people who have access to the orca pool room are the owner and Sasha. So how can you say you monitor all of the animals? Son of a gun. So you knew about the security card, did you? He was the easiest nut to crack ever. God. Yes, tighter security was imposed on the orca a year ago as a precaution. Due to Sasha's objections, I wasn't allowed to have a guard. I guess she was trying to protect Orla from him. So you're monitoring the animals with a system that's private company business. But I have to insist you tell me about this monitoring system. Now you're trying to pick a fight with me. Very well. I suppose it's only fitting that the spoils go to the victor. I'll tell you about this about Shipship Aquarium's ecolo ecological data organization system. So, what does that machine you were using do? It's a system of ecological data organization developed in Europe. I call it the Torpedo. What do you think? Pretty impressive name, isn't it? Torpedo? Has in man the battle stations and all that? No, no, it's the name I gave to this data organization system. Torpedo. It stands for Teleobservation Real-Time Pertinent Data Organizer. I don't name. I wonder if it's super admin restricted desktop access pass protected. The torpedo collects data through sensors placed on or near the subjects. Temperature, heartbeat, vocalizations, etc. It gathers this information 24 hours a day. All of this data is then sent to my terminal and these monitors. Wow, this torpedo sounds amazing. Does Rifle have a sensor on her too? Yes, she does. Where and what kind of sensor is attached depends on the animal. The penguins have theirs attached to the ID tag at the base of the flipper. The torpedo doesn't tell me where Rifle is when she escapes though. It's hard to attach sensors to the orca or fish, so theirs are on the tanks themselves. 
places where the creatures don't normally live, like the show stage, that don't have sensors. Okay, here we go. It's telling me the time rifles swallow the foreign object. Approximately 4 a.m. on July 20th. What an odd time. That was when Sasha was doing the cleaning. Maybe that's why she wouldn't take my fish, because she was full from the night before. But at least Orla ate it, so that's okay. Orla ate another animal's food. That's odd. She's never done that before. And then she had that episode too. I'd better take a look at her data. Huh. She didn't eat anything from the evening of the 19th to yesterday afternoon. So Rifle had a late night snack, but Orla went hungry. Huh. It appears so, but let's see. She's been eating normally since yesterday afternoon. Come to think of it, Jack was supposed to feed Orla yesterday morning. Maybe he died before he had the chance. I'm worried about Orla's condition. I'd better remember this torpedo data. Hmm. I still wonder why he wouldn't tell me about that torpedo. Dr. Crab, why did you want to hide the existence of the torpedo system? Well, it's a safe system that has been approved for use in other countries. But it hasn't been legally approved in this country yet. This country. Yes, me too. I too refer to the country I live in as in as this country. Or this the country I live in. I never once actually specified the country in which I live in. In which I live, I mean. Huh. <sighs> That's why I always carry this terminal around with me. It's not something I want the police poking their nose into. You mean, you're breaking the law? Which is why I was keeping it a secret. It would create a problem for the aquarium, the country that I live in. I had Jack's permission. He felt the animal's care was more important than the legality. But we wanted to shield the rest of the staff, so we kept it a secret. But breaking the law is breaking the law. But in some cases, lives can be saved by breaking the law. Do we simply allow the lives of our animals to be lost while we wait for laws to change? Ah, uh, now you're twisting things around. I'd like to use this evidence during the trial tomorrow. But it may result in you and Shipship Aquarium being brought up in, on charges. Well, I followed my own convictions. And I have no regrets. You're only doing your job. I can't blame you for that, Mr. Lawyer. I appreciate that. What's that sound? Another penguin? That's my ringtone. Gee, Dr. Crab sure likes cute things. Maybe you wanted it to sound like Sniper. Hello? Crab speaking. Son of a gun. You people again, stop harassing this aquarium. Marla was found not guilty. Why on earth should she be put down? Huh? Come there on the 26th and explain? Fine, just let me write it down in my... Son of a gun. Where did my calendar go? His calendar? Will he be talking about that calendar? I realize that if it comes to that, I'll use that drug to euthanize her. Mr. Wright! He said euthanize her. You better ask him more about this. And I should try presenting that calendar to him too. Dr. Crab, isn't this your calendar? Yes, it's mine. What are you doing with it? Mr. Rhymes found it, found it in the nap room. Oh, I must have forgotten it there when I tried to get some rest. It sure is a cute calendar. I guess you're crazy about penguins. Somebody gave it to me, okay? Now please, don't tell anybody about it. It's embarrassing. It's a calendar. Get over it. Masura designed this calendar. This one here is a prototype. She designed a calendar for this year and then she died before it went on sale. Were you and Miss Summers romantically involved? What? What gave you that idea? It's just that I sensed sadness in your heart when you talked about her, about the calendar. Of course we weren't romantically involved. 
I don't believe in romantic feelings. You look shaken, though. By the way, did you meet Mr. Shipley at 7 a.m. on July 20th as scheduled? No. We were supposed to meet, but Jack didn't show up. Is that really true? Sasha finished cleaning the orca room, pool room at 6 a.m. If Dr. Crab managed to get the pool room somehow, get in the pool room somehow and meet with the victim, then he would have had the opportunity to kill Mr. Shipley. Interesting. Who was that phone call from? I don't have a gun. You heard that? Who didn't hurt? Who didn't hear that? It was a Center for Dangerous Animal Control calling with a demand. They said that the orca may have been found not guilty this time. But that if she ever attacked a human again, we would have to put her down. Put her down? But that's horrible! Did you agree to their demand? Animals sometimes do attack humans. And of course, humans sometimes do kill animals to protect themselves. If it comes to that, yes. As a veterinarian, I am prepared to carry out euthanization. Using this poison. Huh? That capsule. It has the same letters on it as the one that was in, the, in Orla's stomach. Did Dr. Crab try to kill Orla? Please let me ask you one more question, Dr. Crab. What is it, Mr. Lawyer? You look so grave. I heard something disturbing from the writer Norma de Plume. The center demanded that the aquarium put the killer whale down a year ago. Put her down? But the aquarium owner refused their demand, saying it was an accidental death. But I hardly think a persistent organization like that would just give up and go away. I'm quite sure the power of money helped convince them. What makes you think that? Once a month, the owner and the vet disappeared from this aquarium. And I came to find out that each time a large amount of money was being paid out. I think Ship Ship Aquarium might be keeping some kind of secret. And that it has something to do with the recent murder. Again? I have psyche locks? That writer. She just has to stick her nose in everyone's business. Do I open them now? Or do I not? Oh, I, I do not. I'm almost done. Son of a gun. Should have dealt with it all more carefully. How am I ever going to remove all those locks? Huh? I figured. Sorry to interrupt, but Prosecutor Blackwell wants Dr. Crab. Detective Fulbright. You again? You couldn't possibly have any more questions for me. Well, you see, we're having a little problem. We were going to call the animal keeper as a witness for the prosecution. Prosecution? But he's being very stubborn and refusing to testify. And so we thought we'd ask you to be a witness in tomorrow's trial. Hmm. Did you really now? Well, I'm not taking sides. I'll, t I'll tell what I know. No more, no less. That would be fine. Now, if you would please come along with me. Well, it looks like we'll have to continue our talk at the trial tomorrow. I don't know what secret you and this aquarium are hiding. I'll uncover it if it if it'll help so save Mr. Bu Miss Buckler. Give it your best shot then. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, it looks like we'll be going up against Dr. Crab in tomorrow's trial. I bet it'll be one tough customer. Okay, we'd better get our evidence organized for tomorrow. I'll have Athena hold on to the evidence I don't think I'll need in court. Damn it, I was so ready to jam. Hello? Mr. Wright, I went to Hickfield Clinic. 
Apollo, use your indoor voice. Sorry about that. Anyway, I found out a lot, so I wanted to tell you right away. It turns out that Mysterious Capsule is a powerful sleeping drug. Apparently, the brand name is Three Cs. Okay, yeah, it says Three Cs, on Cs right on it. You should get your sister's bird to to land in it next time you <laughs> if you meet it. And they said the ship shape aquarium vet recently bought a large quantity from them. The vet, Dr. Herman Crab. Three C's is supposed to be for people. Dr. Crab told them it would work on other mammals like orcas and dolphins too. So Dr. Crab's euthanization poison was actually sleeping pills. When Orla almost drowned today, was it because she'd been giving sleeping pills? And I found out more than just about that... I found out more than just about that capsule. Miss Dr. Hickville himself gave me some information. Ship Ship Aquarium had someone on their staff named Azura Summers, right? Yeah, the one who died a year ago. Well, Asura Summers was getting a certain medication from Hickville Clinic last year. The same heart medication as Sasha Buckler. Really? Asura Summers had the same heart condition as Sasha. Nice work, Apollo. Thank you. I'll be coming back to the office soon. Okay, Tracy and I will be here. Well, we'd better get back to the office and get ready for tomorrow. What are you going to do, Pearls? I'm going to stay overnight here and be with Orla and Rightful. I'll be ready for the for a telecast during the trial tomorrow. Good luck to both of you. Thanks, Pearly. That way, we can prove Sasha's innocent and we can see Orla right away. Well, yeah, you do, but he specifically like talked about them as if they were poison. I'd love to see Sasha and Orla back together again, both free and clear. But before that can happen, I have to prove Sasha's innocence. <laughs> Trial time. What? The ship's doctor and Azura were romantically involved? Well, that's my theory, but I don't actually know if it's really true. That's kind of weird, because that's like... There's like almost 20 years between them. Like, yeah, sure, for once it's actually legal. But you you can't deny that twenty with like someone who was twenty two a year ago isn't weird because that's like eighteen years difference. Uh. Sarah would never get involved with that cod awful ship's doctor, and I do admit they were friends. Would Azura send Dr. Crab videos, I wonder? <laughs> oh, you just say, just like, but would she send him videos? What kind of videos? That's very important to specify here. Videos? What do you mean? Azura used to send her boyfriend videos of herself teaching the orca tricks. Okay. See, this is what you start the sentence with. Don't just like, did she send him videos? That can be misconstrued so easily. He used to help Asura take the videos on her TV phone. Hmm, this is an interesting bit of information. So T 
TV phones can shoot videos too, huh? My dumb phone sure can't. Yeah, because you haven't fucking updated your phone since 2001. God damn it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not saying that it's not likely, but it's still like kind of like, you know? Especially when you're like in your early 20s, that's kind of strange. It seems like your mom's friend was in her like mid 20s, so it's not... Yeah, it's not as weird. I mean, it's still a bit like strange, but it's not as weird. But going for someone that just like recently turned 20 is like... Mm. These TV phones are amazing. They can even record sounds you and I can hear. Really now. The only equipment we use at Chip Shape Aquarium is high tech. It's high tech and you have flip phones. You have flip phones. You have flip phones. This is... This is what phones look like now! This is what they look like! This is what they look like! Just scream! And I can film with this? I can record audio with this? I can... Video chat with this? I can fucking stream with this! <laughs> anyway... Well, yeah, for sure. They're trying to, like, bring it back, too, but it's, like... My first phone was a flip phone. It was, like, a Nokia... Something was a flip phone. Also, look at that tiny screen. I had like this uh, really cool, I believe it was a uh, Sony Ericsson, as they were called back then, phone that had like, it had like touch on like the sides of the screen. I don't even know if I can find it. I don't even know what it's called or anything. And it had like, you could like drag up the, 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 the camera part and it was just like it was such a nice phone and my fucking dumbass managed to lose it that was like the only phone I lost and it was my fucking favorite phone it was so cool and I managed to lose it I miss it not a day goes by when I don't think about it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the ship's doctor sends away for all kinds of trouble. What? The ship's doctor sends away for all kinds of electronics. That doesn't really make any sense. Down a drain? Oh my god. So all the high-tech stuff is Dr. Krabs doing, huh? Anyway, I still highly trout Azura's boyfriend was a ship's doctor. But Dr. Krabs found a charm yesterday, and he was really shaken by it. Charm. Hey, leave that alone. That belonged to Azura. What was Azura's charm doing in Rifle's stomach? That charm looked just like your keepsake of Azura. Yeah, well, she did say she and her boyfriend had matching charms, but was the ship's doctor and Azura really a couple? I, I can't believe it. I think Dr. Crab will be called as a witness today. There are still so many unanswered questions, but I hope to solve them all in today's trial. I believe in you two. I know you can do it. 
And we will, Sasha. We promise. Here come the demons. Whee! <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Sasha Buckler. Defense is ready. Ah! Ready. Now I'm completely thrown off. Very good. It appears both the prosecution and the defense are ready. Yesterday, it was proven that the orca was not guilty and that the victim fell to his death. Prosecutor Blackwell, did your investigation of the orca pooled area turn up anything? Hmm. It did, and we found a blood stain from the victim at the bottom of the pool. On this. Oh my, what a frightening looking rock. And you say it has a blood stain on it? Hmm, just looking at it gives me the willies. So can we assume that there was no water in the pool at the time of the incident? Very good. What a clever little deduction. Oh, oh, oh. well, it's nice to get a compliment from the prosecution for a change. Prosecutor Blackwell has completely tamed the judge with his carrot and stick approach. I guess I should have brought a few carrots of my own. Right. Moving along, I have prepared a witness. Buckler was the only one who entered that room where there, when there was no bottom in the pool. The witness will prove that. Come to the stand, witness. Name and occupation. Dr. Herman Cr Sniper, stay in there! And who is that cute little creature? Hmm, such a restless bird. Quite unlike Taka. Ow. Drunk one up for Taka. I shot Sniper up with a single sound. Son of a gun. Dr. Herman Crab. Sheep Sheep Aquarium Veterinarian. And could you tell us the name of your cute little friend there as well? Your Honor, please focus on the case. But it's important to learn all we can about the witness. This is Sniper. She's the offspring of a penguin named Rifle. Sniper lives in my hair. She might cause a commotion now and then, but please try to ignore her. I wasn't originally going to call the animal keeper to the stand, but he refused to testify, so I settled on the veterinarian. Now tell us, why was the defendant in the orca pool room when the water was drained? <sighs> oh yeah, by the way, um, Fleur, you gotta look at this beautiful piece of art. This... Is what merch looks like. <laughs> this is real, genuine merch. <laughs> oh God, it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I know, right? In the early morning hours of July 20th, Sasha, Sasha was cleaning the orca pool room. Sasha and Jack Shipley, the owner, were scheduled to do the cleaning together. Um, Johnny's West. You know, the group I can never shut the fuck up, up about. <laughs> it came with, like, the last version of the latest album. Little thing right here. Bam, bam, bam. During cleaning, the pool water was drained. While the cleaning was going on, Marlin was taking care of the orca in the show pool. The pool water would never be drained unless the pool was being cleaned. Hmm, and your claim is that the victim was made to fall to his death during the cleaning. Hmm. Only Buckler and the owner had the security card necessary to enter the orca pool and we already know from the security company's record of card usage that the defendant was in the orca pool room during the time of cleaning. 
The witness's testimony and the record of security card usage are conclusive evidence. So no one beside the defendant was at the scene, and the water in the pool was drained. Uh-oh, the judge already seems to be leaning toward the other side. We have to strike fast! Your Honor, we're ready for our cross-examination now. Oh, yes, of course. Please proceed then. The power of youth comes in handy at times like these. <laughs> Gotta press the fifth one. There we go. There's no possibility it would be drained at any time other than doing cleaning. None. Ugh, shut down with a single word. Why are you so certain? Think about it. If the pool water were drained, what would happen to the orca? The poor thing! Whose side are you on, Athena? Exactly, young lady. Without water, Orla would be alright for a short period of time. But anything longer than that would pose serious risks. She could even die. So the fact that Orla is alive and well is proof the water wasn't drained on her. That's right. The Orca Pool and the Show Stage Pool are next door to each other. A hoist runs between the two to move the Orca and the equipment back and forth. When intensive cleaning is done, the Orca is moved to the Stage Pool first. Show Stage Pool first. So the water is only drained while the pool is being cleaned. Hmm, please add that information to your testimony. If there were no water in the pool, the orca would die. Objection! If the water in the pool is drained, you say the orca would die, could die. But is that necessarily true? What are you talking about? There is a way to let the water out without harming the, harming the orca, isn't there? Your Honor, please allow me to submit this photograph. Oh, this is... As you can see, there is no water around the school rock area. With the pool in this state, the victim could have been made to fall to his death. However, there is water on the other side of the partition. And Orla looks just fine. Son of a gun. In other words, if the partition is set up at the bottom of the pool, the water can be drained without doing Orla any harm. Are you implying the water could have been drained at the time other than during cleaning? Yes, there is that possibility. Dr. Crab is shaking. Looks like he has something to hide. Could it have something to do with the calendar note about meeting with the victim? It might. I'll submit it to the judge. Your Honor, please take a look at this calendar. Uh -huh. You waved that around in court yesterday. No need to drag out your souvenir today. Actually, I would like you to make note of the entry for the day of the incident. Let me see here. Meet the captain at the orca pool at 7 a.m. This notice about meeting a plan... About a meeting plan with a victim. What? The defense would like to argue that at the time of, the, of that meeting, the pool may have been drained of its water. Whose calendar is that? It belongs to Dr. Herman Crabb. Isn't that right, Dr. Crabb? Son of a gun. So you suspect me, do you? What is the meaning of this calendar entry, Dr. Crabb? Explain yourself. Fine. I was supposed to meet Jack at the Orca Pool at that time. But I ended up not going. So you're saying you simply broke your promise. You can't get out of it that easily. I believe you have some explaining to do. Yay, demons! Objection. Your blade is sharper than I thought, right, Dono? But your cut was shallow. A mere surface scratch. There's a saying amongst prisoners. Do not see, hear, nor speak to smooth-talking lawyers. If you think the witness is, is suspicious, show your proof. Ah, uh, the calendar alone isn't good enough, huh? We have to prove the victim could have fallen to his death at, at that 7 a.m. meeting time. Let's pour, put our heads together, boss. The victim could have fallen during cleaning when the pool was completely drained. We're using the partition, 
It could have been at 7 a.m. with the water partially drained. What would be the major difference in circumstance between these two possibilities? Hmm, what circumstance was different? The answer could really tell us... Could really tell us something. What circumstance was different between the two possibilities of cleaning it and 7 a.m.? The pool was half filled, Orca was there, time of day was different, Orca was there. If the murder occurred at the time other than during cleaning, the Orca must have been there. Oh, you're right! And that would mean that... Orla witnessed the murder! What's this? You're sheathing your sword so soon. Stop yammering to each other and show me how you wield your sword. Alright then, my sword is poised and ready. If the murder was committed at a time during... Time other than during cleaning time. Are you okay? Are you okay, Bengi? Then Orla must have been present at the scene. If I can prove that the murder happened right in front of Orla... Then I can prove that Miss Buckler is not guilty. Murder! Murder in the court! Mr. Wright, are you implying that the Orca was a witness to the crime? That's exactly what I'm implying. Hmm. And? How do you intend to prove the Orca witnessed the murder? What are you going to do? Put the Orca on the stand and cross-examine her? And that wouldn't that be funny? This is a critical point. I'd better think about it carefully. The defense will... Present evidence. The defense will present evidence. Evidence that will prove Orla witnessed the murder. We are going to present evidence. Knowing their defense, I thought surely you would try to cross-examine the Orca. <laughs> Ye of little faith. Oh my god. I must say I'm a little disappointed. Jeez, I already get your hopes up, your honor. Very well. Let's see this evidence then. What evidence shows that a murder took place right in front of the Orca? Take that! This photo indicates where we discovered luminol reactions yesterday. By accident, we got some of the, some of the luminol testing fluid on or Orla. We were then very surprised to see... Luminol reactions on Orla's body. Objection. So what of it? There's nothing odd about that. As was discussed in yesterday's trial, the orca was bleeding. Traces of the orca's blood were also found on the skull rock. The orca must have injured herself when she rammed the rock. So that cloud of blood Mr. Plume saw was from Orla headbutting the skull rock, was it? Those luminal reactions you saw on the orca are most likely from her headbutting, which is why she had some reactions on her back. Makes sense. Objection! Now what's odd is the position of those blood stains. Please take a good look at the photograph. Yesterday, Mr. Plume said the blood disappeared when Orla put, put on the hat. The testimony indicated that Orla's injuries were under that hat area. However, these luminal reactions are in two entirely separate areas from her injuries. These blood stains can't be Orla's own blood from when she was headbutting. Then where did the blood come from? It's my firm belief that, the, that it's the victim's blood. The victim was killed right in front of Orla. And the victim's blood splattered onto Orla's body. <laughs> Demons! It finally all makes sense. Orla was a witness to the murder. So that's why. For Orla. Plus, something's wrong with Orla. What? You're right. 
She's listless and she's sinking. There's one more fact that indicates Orla was a witness to the murder. There's more? The culprit was afraid Orla could somehow reveal what she witnessed. And that's why they did what they did. It's the only thing that makes sense. We have to present that evidence. Dun, dun, dun. The defense would like to submit this evidence. What's this? It looks like some sort of medicine. It's a sleeping drug, Your Honor. A very powerful one. The sleeping drug was discovered in Orla's stomach yesterday. The culprit tried to drown Orla by putting her into a deep sleep. Tried to drown the orca? But why? Right, Dono. Are you trying to tell this court that the perpetrator tried to kill the orca off to prevent the witness from talking? You really expected to defeat me with that feeble attack? My sword has been drawn. I'm not about to sheathe my evidence now. Orcas have an enormous potential for intelligence. The possibility that Orla could somehow manage to reveal the truth can't be denied. The culprit believed in its possibility, and that's why they tried to kill her. Dr. Herman Crabb, you purchased this sleeping drug, didn't you? What? Does this mean the veterinarian tried to do away with the orca? Who but a veterinarian would better know how to disguise an orca's death? He could even prevent the police from examining Orla's body. Why, you... Are you actually accusing me of trying to murder the murder the orca? How dare you! You slander the noble profession of veterinarian. How does he have enough room to kick? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness! One could cut the tension in this courtroom with a knife. Yes, I admit to purchasing that sleeping drug. However. It was subsequently stolen from my lab. That's such a flimsy excuse. It's the truth. What else can I say? Any one of the crew members could have entered my lab. I guess that weakens my evidence quite a bit. Besides, think about it for a minute. Who was it that treated Orla after she swallowed the drug? It was I. But as I recall, it took you quite a while to give that treatment. You didn't even come on your own. We had to go get you. Son of a gun. You just remember all sorts of little details, don't you, Mr. Lawyer? The orca pool and the lab are far apart. It's little wonder he didn't know Orla's condition. Objection! No, that's highly doubtful. As far apart as they were, Dr. Kraft still had a way to know all about Orla's condition. The defense would like to submit evidence that the witness knew about Orla's condition. Is it the torpedo? Take that. The torpedo. Ugh. You just had to bring that up, didn't you? In this advanced data system, surely you would have known Orla's condition. Objection. Wait just one minute. What is this torpedo? Dr. Crab, how dare you bring a weapon of mass destruction into my courtroom? Again, aged like milk. Oh, you 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 may be onto something. The torpedo or teleobservation real time pertinent data organizer is a data system. How do you remember the fucking name, Phoenix? Until yesterday, only Dr. Crab and Mr. Shipley knew about the torpedo. It isn't legally approved in this country, so it was kept secret. God damn it, from the police. It's illegal? Dr. Crab, I demand an explanation. Son of a gun, you and your big mouth, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look at Sniper! Oh, that's so cute! 
she got hold of the stethoscope. Oh my god. It's like, are you okay? Oh, so cute. I'm actually gonna cry. I'm gonna cry over a fucking tiny penguin chick in a game. As it's true, I'm using an illegal system to monitor the creatures at the aquarium. The system uses sensors like these, and yes, there's one in the orca pool too. These sensors send sound waves through the water to gather data on the creatures. If it finds abnormalities in their condition, the torpedo alerts me with the sound. Oh my goodness! How very high-tech! But if it's illegal, I will not turn a blind eye. And this matter will be appropriately dealt with at a separate time. Now then, Mr. Wright, please continue. With the torpedo, I'm sure Dr. Crabb noticed the danger Orla was in. But he made no attempt to come to her aid on his own. And the reason for that is that Dr. Crabb wanted Orla dead. The torpedo didn't give me a warning message. That's why I didn't know there was anything wrong with Orla. The sensor in the orca pool wasn't working during the police's investigation. Objection! Can you prove that statement? Objection! <laughs> What's with him? I guess this is also high tech for Prosecutor Blackwell that it's making him a little funny. Funny. Yes, I find this all very funny. Witness, those sensors send sound waves through the water, correct? But what if there isn't any water? They wouldn't work. They would automatically switch off. I see. And where is the sensor in the orca pool located? I don't know. Jack is the one who attached it for me. You don't know. Then I will tell you. The police found a sensor just like the one you just showed us. Chief? Which chief? We found it attached to the table at the bottom of the pool. Table? Do you mean the table in this photograph? That's right. Don't you get it yet, right, Donald? The table is on the school rock side of the partition. Chief of police? You mean Damon Gant? Yeah. That was something. It's affixed to the bottom of the pool and can't be moved. Wow, oh, and so if the water was drained from the school rock side of the pool... How... I mean, it's true, but still. Precisely. Without water, the torpedo sensor could not- would not work. Witness, when did that sensor automatically switch off? Hang on, I'll look it up. The only times lately were during cleaning two days ago and the investigation yesterday. Of course, I knew the pool would be drained while they cleaned it. But I had no idea they drained it for the investigation. No one let me know. That's why I didn't know about Orla's condition yesterday. So Dr. Crab really did want to save Orla. <laughs> Did you hear that, right, Dono? Yes, the water can be drained without harm to the orca if, a, if the partition is used. But if the water is drained from the school rock side, the sensor turns itself off. If the sensor was always on, ex on except during the cleaning and the investigation. It means there must have been water in the pool at all other times. It was never drained. In other words... No one but the defendant could have committed the crime. Ah! Mm. 
Order! Order in the court! This completely shatters the defense's argument. Our argument. But... The fact still remains that Orla was nearly killed with Dr. Crab's sleeping drug. Objection. But aren't you forgetting one important question? When was the sleeping drug given to the orca? You're right. That hasn't been discussed, discussed yet, has it? The orca pool is the scene of the murder. The police were there all day yesterday. The only way to give the drug to the orca undetected is to put it in her food. Yesterday, someone gave the orca food during the trial. Someone did? I am afraid I don't remember that. You don't remember. You're not that old yet, are you? It was the defendant. Sasha Buckler. Ah! Hmm. So that is the orca that stands accused, is it? Aw, she's waving her flipper at us. Maybe she's cheering us on. Orla, wish Phoenix and Athena luck. So your argument is that Miss Buckler is the one who gave the orca the drug. Um... I'm pretty sure Marlin took over for a while. And he was definitely the one who fed her the most fish. I'm just putting that out there. Considering he literally took a bucket and just like threw it. There were like several fish on the screen at once and she got at least three of them in her mouth. Hold on, wait, I'm just gonna go grab my um, phone charger because my phone is dying. The prosecution's argument hasn't changed. Buckler made the victim fall to his death and then manipulated the orca to pin it on her. Still not satisfied, she further planned to kill the orca with the sleeping drug. Hmm, I didn't hear any reports of Dr. Crab feeding Orla. Maybe he didn't have a hand in Orla's attempted murder after all. But is there anybody else who could have fed Orla besides Sasha? If it's true that the defendant is the one who fed the sleeping drug to the to the orca. And then that place is even more suspicion on her than ever. Objection! The defense objects to the prosecution's claims. Well, well, you still haven't admitted defeat. Prosecutor Blackwell, I don't appreciate the way you only mention the parts that are convenient for you. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? The, the prosecutor failed to mention that Miss Buckler wasn't the only one who fed Orla. As you will all recall, there was another person who gave Orla food. Oh, you mean that person? Looks like Athena remembers now, too. I don't know if she actually does. I think she just, like, played along. Oh, yeah, that person. Sure, that... Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, that person. Congrats, Sasha. This is to celebrate. Eat it all up. Oh, Mr. Wright. No. I don't want to believe it either. But we can't ignore the truth. The other person who fed Orla during the trial was...
Mm-hmm. Pretty much me. Anytime. I'm just like, oh, yeah, sure. And I'm just like, no fucking clue. I know that person. I totally know what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take that. Please recall when Orla was found not guilty yesterday. Marlon Rhymes gave the Orga... Or... Orga? <laughs> what? Orca a large quantity of food. If the sleeping drug was mixed in with that food, it could be given to the Orca without arousing police suspicion. Now that you mention it, I do remember that flip-flopper feeding... Feeding the Orca. I forgot he... he... Objection. Calls hip-hop flip-flop. Hmm, so you remember, did you? I see the time for a true sword fight has come. I call Marlon Rhymes to the stand. Mr. Lawyer, both Ms. Orca Lover and Marlon Rhymes are important members of our crew. I don't want to suspect either of them. But I'm ready to accept whatever truth you find. Here, take this. A charm. It's a charm that matches the one Azura Summers had, isn't it? So you and Miss Summers were romantically involved, weren't you, Dr. Crab? What? No, of course not. Sorry to disappoint you, but this doesn't belong to me. At the time, I thought it was Asura's, so I grabbed it. But it wasn't hers. Now it's up to you, Mr. Lawyer, to figure out whose charm it is. I will. Thank you, Dr. Crab. After all, I'm interested in the outcome of this trial, too. Now then, please summon Marlon Rhymes to the witness stand. <laughs> What's going on? What's everybody making that face for? We haven't been watching the trial and nobody's told me anything. Marlon Rhymes. You're under suspicion for the attempted murder of the Orca. <laughs> Sorry. I see. Well, if it's already out... Mr. Rhymes? Is he really going to admit it? That was... Way too fast. Fine, I'll tell the truth. Please no rap, please no rap, please no rap, please no rap. I don't want no flip-flopping rap. Okay, Sasha's lying to protect that orca. At 3.30am on the 20th, there was still water in the orca pool. The incident happened before the orca was moved to the show pool. Or Orla killed the captain by bashing him 30 feet high and making him slam down in the water. So I thought the orca should, play the, should pay the consequences. Now we're back to the orca again. I did not see that testimony coming. Oh wait just one minute. Yesterday Orla was proven innocent. Yes, they do call him thongs. Besides, you said Orla was in the show pool during the cleaning. I didn't want to tell Sasha out. That's why I didn't tell the truth. But the fact is, all three of us, Sasha, the captain, and me, were cleaning the pool room. But Dr. Crabbe and Miss Bucklers both said you were at the show stage. Well, the only thing Dr. Crabbe knew about the cleaning was that what I told him. I didn't give him a whole lot of details either. Maybe he misunderstood. And Sasha is lying to protect the orca. She can't tell the truth. Sasha put blood on the skull rock herself to make a fake blood stain. I think it's pretty brave of her to let herself get arrested to protect the orca. I'm too I'm too scared of Australia. I would never be able to. Mr. Rhymes, how can you lie li lie like that? It's the truth. Besides, wouldn't it be better for you if I wasn't lying? If the orca did it, you win your case. This is all very hard to believe. But if Mr. Rhymes' story is true, Miss Buckler would be innocent and the orca would be the killer. The spiders alone. Yeah, the spiders, that's one thing. But there's also the, the fact that there is like this... Unless it's a fucking lie, I don't fucking know anymore. I don't know what to believe and what to, like, not believe. It just seems like a... 
yeah, kangaroos can kill you. But that's not the thing I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the fucking swooping season. Where the birds just fucking come like flying at your head. Which sounds terrifying. I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting a, a fucking airstrike <laughs> from birds. Okay. <clears throat> Meaning, if we turn our backs on Orla, we could save Sasha. Having a witness lie to save your own client. What a dirty, underhanded tactic, right, Dono? Objection! Shiny McDonald's? <laughs> Yesterday, the defense proved Orla was not guilty. We have no intention of going back on our assertions now. What are you saying, Mr. Wright? All you gotta do is admit the orchid did it and Sasha goes free. Isn't the lawyer supposed to act in his client's best interest? Uh, what if I consider them both to be my client? <laughs> That wouldn't be acting in her interest. Miss Buckler believes Orla is innocent. And we, of course, believe what Miss Buckler herself believe that Miss Buckler herself is innocent too. Acting in the client's best interest is an important part of a job of our of our job as lawyers. Using dirty means to win a win a verdict would totally would destroy our client's faith in us. God, why am I not reading properly? That's right! We believe in both Miss Buckler and Orla's innocence. Huh? I just don't understand how you can treat a human and an orca equally. Sasha or the orca, you can only save one of them. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think I can save them both. All I have to do is disprove your testimony. Yeah, give her, give her a link permission. Oh yeah? Then go ahead and try. I will do just that. Hold on, what's it say? Hungry Jacks? Fascinating. If I can't tear down his testimony, I won't be able to save both of them. We have to find a weak spot and start tearing. Ooh, seagull fact. I'm terrified of seagulls. Oh, I'm not kill the captain, but bash him. Oh, this one. Shibley's data. Where is that? There we go. Objection! Got them addicted to sesame bagels? Why? When mice are piled on top of each other, contradictions start to emerge. This time is no different. Are you saying there's some kind of inconsistency in my testimony? That's exactly what I'm saying. You claim that the victim was sent flying about 30 feet into the air. What? One-legged seagull? I hope that's um, a statue or something and not an actual seagull. I don't think it would be able to hold <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I thought you said it was, he was, <laughs> ah, he was like, ah, uh, okay, 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 I thought he, <laughs> why did I read it so wrong? I, I read it as literally on, like, as like on top of and I was like but that that can't have been the real okay sorry 
to be fair, that could be read. That could be read. That could be read both ways. So I don't feel as stupid, but I still feel kind of stupid. It's just standing on the seagull, <laughs> which is why I was like, that can't have been a real seagull. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> But the autopsy report states that, that the cause of the of death was thought to be from a 65-foot fall. What? Additionally, in your testimony a moment ago, you said at 3.30 a.m. on the 20th there was still water in the orca pool. The pool is about 65 foot feet deep, and there is about 30 feet between the water and the ceiling. If the pool was full of water, as you claimed, it would be impossible for the victim to fall about 65 feet, as the autopsy states. Ah. GG Marlin. Mr. Rhymes claimed he was in the Orca pool room so he could make these statements. But the truth must be that he was at the show stage just as Dr. Crabbe and Sasha testified. Hmm. Huh. I believe that brings us back around to that Orca didn't do it. I didn't believe the witness's testimony from the outset. I am grateful to you, right, Dolo, for shutting the witness up. As I thought, the only person who could have killed the victim is Sasha Buckler. And that fact still remains whether the witness was the one who tried to kill the orca or not. Son of a... Mr. Rhines was right about one thing. His testimony was advantageous to our case. And pointing out the contradictions in his statement will only drive us into a corner. Mass Prosecutor Blackwell said, suspicion against Miss Buckler is now deepened. Uh-oh, if I don't do something fast, the judge is going to find Sasha guilty. Mr. Wright, isn't there anything we can do? There has to be a way to prove Sasha is innocent. At a time like this, the thing to do is turn my thinking around. Instead of trying to prove that Sasha couldn't have done it, we have to think about what made it possible for somebody else to have done it. As long as the crime scene is the Orca pool room, then Sasha is the only one who could have committed the crime. No need for pity or boldness. Just finish him off with a swift verdict. It appears the defense has no ob objections. Very well, I will give my verdict. Holy your honor, please hold off on that verdict. But you are so quiet, Mr. Wright. Do you have something to say now? The defense has a counter-argument. You do? Hmm. Pitiful. Such desperation. You look pale. Are you sure you're prepared to make this counter-argument? A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Sir, you ain't smiling. <laughs> we'll never forget those words, no matter how many years go by. Even though it's probably just a bluff, I'll give it to them with a smile. What if the scene of the crime was somewhere else? That's a smirk, but okay. The scene of the crime? Somewhere else? What? You're finding fault with the police investigation now? As I understand it, the prosecution's argument is as follows. The scene of the crime was the orca pool room. Only the defendant and victim entered that room when there was no water in the pool. Therefore, only the defendant could have committed the crime. That is correct. But if the scene of the crime was not the orca pool room, then somebody other than the defendant could have committed the crime. Hell yeah, demons. Are you sure you know where you're going with this? I might not be too sure, but I can't back down now. Mr. Wright, I hope that I'm wrong, but this isn't one of your bluffs by any chance. <laughs> of course not. The judge knows me far too well. And do you have a theory on where the actual scene of the crime was? Yes, of course. Think, Phoenix, think. Think of a place other than the, 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 than the orca pool room. Where one could fall to one's death. <laughs> then by all means, please share your theory with the court. 
What are we thinking, boys? Where was the real scene of the murder? stage pool might have been drained of water at some point as well and if so it would be possible would be just as possible to fall to one's death there as the orca pool right Dolan. what you're doing is a disgrace to your profession i sincerely hope you have some basis for what you're suggesting <laughs> well, of course i do I will, as soon as I think of something. The victim's body was found in the orca pool. How do you f explain that? Objection! How about if after the victim was killed in the show stage pool, his body was moved to the orca pool? How about if? What kind of presentation of your argument is that? You had better have a reasonable explanation for how, of how the body was moved. There's no turning back now. You have to think of a way the body could have been moved. Was there something at the scene that could have been used to move the body? The hoist runs between the orca pool room and the show stage. The stretcher can be hung from the hoist to move things like Orla or the school rock. The stretcher could also have been used to move the dead body. Hmm, yes, if the stretcher can move the orca or the school rock. It seems most likely it would also move a dead body as well. My mom would just throw out accusations and see what sticks. <laughs> Literally, though. It's so accurate. So we agree this is your toothbrush. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Somehow that worked. I just might be able to pull this off. If the show pool was the scene of the crime, somebody else could have done it. Objection. <laughs> you desperately spew conjecture and now you even make up a crime scene. No! Ah! <laughs> Not again! You don't have the soul of a warrior. You don't deserve to be on the battlefield. And even your fabrication is half-baked. It's a disgrace. What do you mean, half-baked? The hoist can be operated from the orca pool room only. Ah! And the only person who entered the orca pool room was the defendant. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Even if the body was moved, the only one who could have moved it was the defendant herself. <laughs> Order! So it comes back to the defendant no matter which pool it was. Meaning, I can't clear Sasha either way. Sasha said she moved Orla and the school rock. And I believe her. But could it be possible that she moved the body herself without being aware of it? Mr. Wright, do you have an objection to Prosecutor Blackpool's claim? Do I have an objection to the claim that the defendant moved the body? I have no objections. I have... No objections. Miss Buckler must have been the one who moved the body. What? Mr. Wright, are you admitting the defendant committed the murder? No, I am simply conceding that she was the only one who could have moved the body. However, I contend Miss Buckler was not aware that that is what she was doing. The culprit made her move it, unbeknownst to her. The defendant moved the dead body without recognizing that it was a dead body? How could that be possible? The body was found in the orca pool. It must have been moved there somehow. I might find some kind of hint in the things she moved with the stretcher. 
The culprit made Miss Buckler move the body along with this piece of evidence. Take that! The skull rock? Miss Buckler told me yesterday that she moved the skull rock when she was cleaning. Yeah, the only two things Miss Buckler moved to the orca pool are Orla and the, and the skull rock. I would like to suggest that the victim's body may have been inside the school rock. What? Hidden inside the rock, the body could have been moved to the orca pool with a hoist. At the show stage, Marlon Rhymes loaded up the school rock with the body inside. And then he used the walkie-talkie to let Miss Buckler know the rock was loaded. Miss Buckler operated the hoist, hoist from the orca pool room and moved the stretcher. She moved the rock without knowing the body was inside. Do you really think there is enough space inside the school rock to place a body? A swashbuckler flyer indicates it could be possible. Please focus on the question at the bottom left. Oh, it says who would obtain the gold coins hidden in the school rock? Hmm, in that case, I suppose the rock is most likely hollow. Once more. If the body was inside the school rock, it explains the remaining unanswered questions. Such as? Please take a look at the security footage of the scene Ms. Pl Mr. Plume witnessed. Where did the body that Mr. Plume saw come from? Please recall. What was Orla doing to the school rock at this time? She was headbutting it. No! Oh. That's right. Orla ramming. Orla's ramming released the body from the school rock. The body had been placed inside the school rock and moved there from the show stage. I assert that the real murder scene was, in fact, the show stage pool. Silence. Hmm. What rubbish is this now? You don't have a single scrap of evidence. Objection! It's easy enough to verify what I say. Take a look inside the school rock for yourself. You should find some kind of proof that the body was there. Blood, fibers, hair... <laughs> I don't know. Mr. Wright! That was incredible! You turned things completely around! And to think, it all started with that half-baked bluff too! Oh, that was a close one. Did you really have to add that last bit? If the murder took place at the show stage, then who is the perpetrator? It is naturally the person who was at the show, at the show stage. Mr. Rhymes, aren't you the one who loaded the skull rock into the, onto the stretcher at the show stage? <laughs> oh, Mr. Wright. That was some pretty smart brain work you did there. To be honest, I never thought you could figure it out. I tried to protect myself, but I guess it came back to bite me. Are you confessing to your- You gave false testimony before Mr. Rhymes? That's perjury! Yeah. What well, Mr. Wright says is true. The body was inside the school rock. And it's true the captain was killed in the show pool, too. What? He's admitting it that easily? It's time. I'm going to tell you the whole truth about what happened that day. In the show pool, the orca shot the captain up into the air, and the captain came down and slammed it into the water. I can still remember the specta spectator's screams clearly. All Sasha did was move the body. She was trying to protect the orca. When Mr. Plume witnessed the orca finding the body, I freaked. Huh. So now we're back to the orca again. I see. If you were going to give testimony like that, why did they bother putting you on the stand? All I'm doing is telling the truth. The day Sasha wanted to do the old version of the Swashbuckler Spectacular. So I suggested she hide the body in the school rock and move it to the orca pool. I was gonna figure out what to do with the body after the show was over. The orca is the one that killed the captain. It wasn't me, and it wasn't Sasha. So it was Mr. Rhymes' idea to hide the body in the school rock. But if Mr. Rhymes is the culprit, why would he protect Sasha? 
False charges against Sasha would mean he, he himself would escape suspicion. So why? Mr. Wright, how about if you leave this to me? Athena, do you mean you heard something? Yep, noise. Discord in Mr. Rhymes' heart. So that means somewhere in his testimony, there is an inconsistency in his emotions. All right, Athena, give him a good counseling session. You got it, boss. Huh? What's this? What are you getting, Athena? Hmm... This testimony is pretty complex. Feelings of deep sadness and intense anger are being called up. Those two emotions appear to be running out of control. Out of control emotions. Is that going to be a problem? We'll have to probe their cause if we want to get, the, get to his true emotions and testimony. There might even be odd or natural spots in his testimony he isn't even aware of. Alright, let's probe the cause of this of his out-of-control emotions then. I'll explain how to probe. Let's find the root cause together. I know how to probe. Yeah, okay, whatever. Great, alright. I'll get started comparing the statements with the images. The show pole, the orca shot the captain up into the air. Then the captain came down and slammed into the water. I can still remember the spectator's screams. Clearly. All Sasha did was move the body. She was trying to protect the orca. When Mr. Plume witnessed the orca finding the body, he freaked. It's here. I doubt there were any spectators there at the show stage when the owner died. If there had been, those witnesses would have told us the true crime scene right away. What? Alright, oh, of course. I just made a mistake. Okay, I made the sadness subside. So maybe the spectator's part was what was what was making him sad. I wonder why he would make that mistake saying spectators were there. How strange. The only thing I can think of is that he was mixing up one memory with a, with another. Like, he was in a similar situation before and it was deeply imprinted on his heart. A situation where an orca killed somebody and there were spectators there. Hey... I think I know why he's making mixing up his memories. The reason why Mr. Rhymes mixed up his memories is... Where is it? Um, the book. This one. Take that! Mr. Rhymes, I think I know what happened. Could you have been mixing up what happened a year ago with this incident? Maybe that's why you slipped and said the owner was killed in front of spectators. What? How did you... You're right. I did see the orca kill somebody a year ago. What about it? I was just one of the spectators. Really? Just another spectator? There must be a reason why you feel great sadness about that incident last year. Silence! Stop this nonsensical scrutiny of feelings. Just present evidence and pr to prove your point. Boss, do we have any kind of evidence that could back us up here? Hmm, there is one piece that comes to mind that might explain his sadness. Well, I'm waiting. Let's see this evidence that has to do with Marlon Rhymes' sadness. The charm? Take that! Nope. Oh, it is! Asura Summers died an accidental death one year ago. This is her boyfriend's charm. Hey! What are you doing with that charm? It was found in Rifle's stomach yesterday. Judging by your reaction, I believe this charm belongs to you? I guess I need to push him just a little harder to make him admit it. Oh god, when Mr. Rhymes said the word charm, he was very rattled. We better examine this charm a little more. Good idea, let's look inside it. Huh? 
What's this? A photograph. Hold on, let me just save, actually. Hey! This is... Asura Summers and Marlin Rhymes! Mr. Rhymes, you and Asura Summers were a couple, weren't you? Mm -hmm. So what if we were a couple? It doesn't have anything to do with the captain's case. I don't believe you saw the orca kill your girlfriend. That's the cause of your sadness. Isn't that emotion of yours connected to the current case? Silence! The only thing you revealed was that the witness's relationship was the witness's relationship with the victim a year ago. What does the witness witness's past have to do with the case at hand? I don't know yet. But we managed to pinpoint the source of his sadness. Now let's delve into who Mr. Rhymes is angry at. In the show pool, the orca shot the captain up into the air. And the captain came down and slammed into the water. I can still remember the captain's dead body clearly. All Sasha did was move the body. She was trying to protect the orca. When Mr. Plume witnessed the orca finding the body, I freaked. Interesting. It has to be the orca. Has to be Orla. Mr. Rhymes, you're angry with Orla, aren't you? Angry? At an orca? Why would I be? Be? Be. If you think I have some reason to be mad, then show me some proof. Do I have proof that Mr. Rhymes has a reason to be mad? Uh. Uh. I've got your proof. I bet that evidence we took just a, we just took a look at would come in handy here. This charm indicates that you were a sewer summer's boyfriend. I'm sure you believe Orla killed your girlfriend a year ago. You lost your girlfriend, and so you've been angry at Orla. Mm. All right. I'll admit it. I'll never forgive that orca. Azura is dead, and that orca is still swimming around, happy as a clam. I became an animal keeper just so I could prove that orca is a killer. You're right. I want that orca to pay. There. You feel good dragging up a person's past, but it still doesn't change anything. Ah, uh, He's right. I disagree. It does change things. His out-of-control emotion quieted down. Now we should be able to find out, the, find out the truth behind that emotion. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I mean, the sadness here. Ah, it's here, apparently. This one was. This is dumb. It's a surprise because I freaked, but I wasn't surprised. Why? When Mr. Plume witnessed the orca finding the body, you freaked. Really? What are you getting at? If Mr. Plume was a witness, Orla was guaranteed to be accused of the murder. Didn't it work out exactly as you'd hoped? 
In order to have Orla put down, you made sure Mr. Plume witnessed that scene. <laughs> Sorry, that looks really funny. His face, it looks so strange. It looks so... So you figured all that out, did you? Mr. Rhymes, are you admitting it? I'm admitting it. I'm admitting it. I didn't really want to have to fight anybody but the Orca. But you leave me no choice. It's time to get serious. Ahoy! What, what? Yo, 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 ho, ho! Ahoy, me, me, brothers! Represent! I've asked you grass eaters, stay free! Take me words and pop in your mouth! Screw the grass eaters, need me to be- Yo, 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 ho, ho! Bro, I'm ready for the showdown! Okay. <laughs> mean brothers? <laughs> what, 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 what is going on? Where did this pirate fellow come from? He looks like a completely different person. Leave that fish. <laughs> order! If we don't have order, Prosecutor Blackwell will yell at us. <laughs> Poor baby. Even Prosecutor Blackwell is at a loss for words. I plan to have that wench be a witness. <laughs> Arr, you caught me out. Can we talk about how he literally drank the fish water? That was from like the buckets or. Mm -hmm. How did you read it as bimbo? <laughs> Are you trying to say he has himbo energy? Because I don't think so. It'd be true, I thought that Orca's murderous ways would, should be found out. That'd be why I schemed to have the plume see the body. So you admit it, you deliberately framed Orla. Arr, it'd be true. What skin be that off of anybody's nose? That Orca be a murdering scurvy dog. I may have a grudge against that Orca, but I always felt grateful toward the captain. The orca murdered Ka Azura and the captain, so of course, she should walk the plank. You know, I don't think... <laughs> I know. I know, I know, I know. It might be really stupid. <laughs> but it's not kind. <laughs> he likes animals, though. Oh my god. He literally looks like a, a One Piece character. <laughs> I say, as I have never watched One Piece in my entire life. Of course, you should walk the plank. You know, I don't I don't think Orcas can walk. Uh, I don't have a response to that. I don't think the fish were alive. Or were they? I don't fucking know anymore. I agree it wouldn't make any sense for him to kill the owner, but why would he? But his hatred for Orla, on the other hand, comes through loud and clear. Why couldn't you continue? I'm actually curious. Hmm, wait a minute. If killing Mr. Shipley doesn't make sense, who would it make sense for Rhymes to kill? 
Maybe my theory has been all wrong. Your Honor, I think I just became aware of a new fact. Oh, and what is that? Well, now that we know about Mr. Rhymes' intense hatred of Orla, it turns the premise we've been arguing under under on its ear. I will never reveal the ident identity of the individual Mr. Rhymes meant to kill from the start. No. Where is... there. Take that. What? So the witness's intent was to kill the orca? Exactly. The witness's intended victim was not Jack Shipley. From the start, it was all a scheme to kill Orla. The orca was his true target. But Jack Shipley is the one who died. The orca is alive and quite well. So much goddamn yelling. Hmm. He's right. He wanted to kill the orca, and yet it was Jack Shipley who fell to his death. How did that happen? Wait a minute. What if... What if Mr. Rhymes wanting to kill Orla was somehow connected to Mr. Shipley's death? Hmm. At a loss for words, are you? What happened to your bravado of a moment ago? Enough of these reckless words, without any basis in fact. Objection! They aren't reckless words. The basis for my claim is that the real murder scene, the show pool, what are you talking about? It's my contention that two incidents happened at the show pool. Okay. The attempted murder of the orca and the victim falling to his death. First of all, in order to kill the orca, Mr. Rhymes removed something from the scene. And by so doing, he made it possible for Mr. Shipley to fall to his death. What did he remove? This is what Mr. Rhymes removed from in an attempt to kill Orla. Don't tell me you're trying to claim it tried to kill the orca by draining the pool water. That's exactly what I'm claiming. To help the defendant with the cleaning, Marlon Rhymes took charge of Orla. With a plan to kill Orla and the show pool. And because the pool water was drained. He made it possible for Jack Shipley to fall to his death in the show pool. Tried to kill the orca, you say? Man's really said sushi. You would gross. And he even proved there was nearly a drop of water in the pool. That day, I was simply looking after the orca. I would have the monstrous thought of killing it. Objection! You claim you were looking after Orly in the early morning hours of July 20th. But I don't think you were doing a very good job of it. After all, Orla wasn't given anything to eat during that time. How would you know such a thing? I know because of Orla's record here in the torpedo data system. And this system continuously records data on the subject it monitors. Monitors... From Orla's record, we can tell exactly when she ate, or didn't eat. Sink me, nobody ever told me about that dastardly contraption. Only a few of the ship shape aquarium staff know about the system. According to Orla's record, she never ate in those early morning hours of the 20th. You plan to kill Orla, and that's why you didn't feed her. Silence. Hmm, you're wasting time. What proof do you have of that? Perhaps the orca simply wasn't hungry. Uh, he's right. I don't have any proof. If Orla simply didn't eat, then that would create an inconsistency. Where did her fish go? Her fish? Good question. Where did it? Where did? Where did it disappear to? Fish. What does it matter? What relevance does it have to the case? Cease this stalling by asking in in inconsequential questions. Stop delving into the depths of the orca's stomach and delve into the case instead. Objection! Wait, it may seem like a small inconsistency. 
But it's an issue of great importance, I think. What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? How could the fish disappear? Somebody must have eaten it. So who came to the show stage and ate Orla's fish? I think I might have a pretty good idea. I believe there must be must have been a visitor to the sh show stage that Mr. Rhymes didn't notice. Visitor, are you trying to introduce yet another suspect at this 11th hour? If you utter more of your careless remarks, Taka won't look favorably upon it. I don't plan to utter only careless remarks. Whether my remarks will be will actually be related to the case or not, I don't yet know. Don't worry, boss. If Taka comes this way, I'll fend him off. But do try to keep your remarks careful. Somehow, more or less fish disappeared. Somebody must have visited the show stage, but who? This must have visited her to the show stage. Rifle. I believe Rifle the Penguin visited, visited the show stage. First an orca, now a penguin? Why would you be saying such a thing, Mr. Lawyer? I didn't see Rifle during the wee early morning hours. Do you have any proof Rifle visited the show stage? If you be a lawyer of any salt, show me your evidence. The bottom of Rifle's feet were pink for some reason. That fact is the clue that Rifle was indeed at the show stage. We have to present that piece of evidence that connects Rifle to the show stage. Ha! I know! Now to prove I'm a lawyer worth my salt. This is the proof that Rifle visited the show stage. Where is it? Where is it? There! There! Oh my! What a cute little sign! Look at all of those adorable stars! These stars are actually starfish. Miss Buckler painted this sign. In the early morning hours of the 20th, she left this sign at the show stage to dry. Mr. Rhymes kept an eye on the sign for Miss Buckler while the paint was drying. Aye, that be true. But what be your point? On this sign is proof that Rifle visited the show stage. Proof of the penguin's visit? I'm afraid I don't see it. Where is the proof that the penguin visited the show stage? Please point it out. Take that! A couple of the pink starfish are shaped a little differently from the others. It really said, how can we make these look like remotely similar? <laughs> You're right. They almost look like little leaves. Rifle had pink paint on the bottom of her feet. These little leaf-like shapes on this sign are actually Rifle's footprints. Rifle made these footprints by walking on the sign before it was dry. Oh, oh what cute little pink penguin prints. So there are footprints. What of them? Marlin Rhines was watching over this sign at the show stage while the paint dried. And during that time, the penguin paid a visit. According to the torpedo data system, we know that Rifle ate something that morning of the eight, of the 20th. Most likely, Rifle ate the fish meant for Orla that was at the show stage. Orla's snack was a small, a small quantity of fish. Even a penguin could have eaten it all. But gad, Rifle ate Orla's fish. Who be ye to say Rifle ate Orla's fish? She sh could have picked up food anywhere. But that doesn't change the fact that it really... That I really was at the show stage. After all, I had to help move the school rock. It couldn't have been moved without me. The witness claims he never saw the penguin. How do you explain this contradiction? Both Mr. Rhymes and Rifle were at the show stage, but Mr. Rhymes didn't see her. So where could Mr. Rhymes have been at the time? Right, Dolo. If you aren't up to the task, I could disprove this witness's testimony for you. I leave it to Prosecutor Blackwell, Sasha will be declared guilty. I can't let him interrupt this line of reasoning. Mr. Wright, let's try to figure out how things looked when Rifle came to the show stage. Mr. Rhymes was at the show stage, keeping an eye on Orla and the sign. And we know it must be true, because he helped move the skull rock. And then Rifle come, came in and walked over the sign. Wouldn't Mr. Rhymes notice Rifle if it was right there? Well, let's think about where Mr. Rhymes could have been. Is there a place in the show stage area from which Rifle couldn't have been seen? What? what? Inside the pool? But you're right. 
If he was inside the pool, he, could, he wouldn't have noticed Rifle. So are you saying Mr. Rhymes was underwater the whole time Rifle was eating? No, not underwater. When I think about what, it, what he was trying to do, the answer is clear. I'm finally starting to get the whole picture. Hmm. Just like yesterday. Must you two always be whispering to each other? Why don't you admit that resorting to a penguin will get you nowhere? Objection! Oh, I don't know about that. The fact that Mr. Rhymes didn't notice Rifle is such a small inconsistency. But it's a key point. Yes, okay. That proves what Mr. Rhymes was trying to do. The penguin is a key point. And the show stage pool is very deep. If Rifle came to visit while Mr. Rhymes was at the bottom of this pool, he would have never no he would have never noticed Rifle. Arr. Orchids can be under the water for a short time without sustaining damage. But if they're out of the water for a long time, they, they weaken and eventually die. In order to kill Orla, Mr. Rhymes had to drain the pool. And while the pool was drained of water, Mr. Shipley fell to his death. The show stage pool is about 65 feet deep, just like the orca pool. Without water in the pool, a person could be made to fall 65 feet. Mr. Rhymes probably wondered what to do. If he continued with his plan to kill Orla, how could he dispose of Mr. Shipley's body? So he devised a plan to kill two birds with one stone. What? Ow. Mr. Rhymes went down to the bottom of the pool and put the victim's body in the, in the rock. He then had Miss Buckler move the rock and the body together. Silence. And the witness made the defendant do this somehow without arousing his, her suspicion. That's right, Mr. Shipley told Miss Buckler that she couldn't perform in the new show. Miss Buckler became upset and wanted to switch back to the old version of the show. So Mr. Rhymes conveniently suggested that she take and hide the, the, a prop from, for the new show. Mr. Rhymes then uh, manipulated Orla using her singing and lifesaver tricks. He schemed to have Orla find the body while Mr. Plume would be standing witness. He saddled Orla with a with a false charge of murder so that Orla would be put down. What? Arr. Arr. I'm sorry, what the fuck was that? So, the fact that the witness didn't see the penguin shows that when Rifle visited the show stage, Rice was putting the body in the rock. At the bottom of the pool, that is. Who would have thought the presence of a penguin could prove the witness's actions? It's working. Just a little further now and Sasha will be proven not guilty. Silence. If you think you've won this battle, you are sorely mistaken. Your theory is based on the notion that the witness could manipulate the orca. Witness, can you control the orca's actions? Of course not. What kind of village is village be that? I be but a simple animal keeper. If my memory serves, wasn't Miss Buckler the only one who could issue commands to the orca? Uh. Hmm. The judge's blade is sharper than the lawyer's. If you wish to do a battle with a witness, you'll need a honed blade. Where is your sword of evidence that Marlin Rhymes could manipulate the orca? Ah! Rhymes had to have manipulated Orla in order for his plan to work. Yeah, I was also thinking about the videos. <laughs> but how can I prove it? Well, it appears this line of reasoning has become unsustainable. Objection! Well, it appears that I was mistaken. Athena? I've analyzed the hearts of all kinds of people. I have enough experience to see when I look into your, your heart that you haven't given up. So that objection was my way of speaking up for your heart. She's right. 
Why would I become a lawyer again, only to give up? You have to keep fighting. Athena, thank you. With your help, I remember the old right way. The right way? Your Honor, I'm not finished with presenting my argument. Hmm, do you have anything else to ask this witness? You've cross-examined all the witnesses and presented all your evidence. Objection! All the witnesses? Hmm, I don't think so. I haven't cross-examined the most important one, the central figure in both cases. Here we fucking go. The central figure. The one involved in not only the case a year ago, but this current case too. I've never called her as a witness, but it's time to do so now. What are you talking about? I demand you tell the court immediately. Who is this central figure in both cases? Defense calls the central figure in both cases, Orla the Orca. We're gonna cross-examine an orca. Do you intend to cross-examine an orca? Arr, cross-examine an orca. You must be addled. It'd be impossible, says I. The demons are in uproar. Silence. This absurdity is beyond the pale. How do you expect to question an orca, a creature incapable of speech? Objection! <laughs> Orla is intricately involved in, th in this <laughs> in this case. I have every right to cross-examine her. I can't fucking keep a straight face. Besides, even if she can't speak, I think cross-examining her will be invaluable. Very well, do what you will then. But if you fail to garner anything from this little exercise with the orca... I hope you realize the reward for your efforts will be the defendant's guilty verdict. I'm ready and confident. So, cross-examine an Orla, huh? How was a bold move, boss? Now all we have to do is figure out how Mr. Rhymes manipulated Orla. That's right, now it's Orla's turn to help us save Sasha. An orca defendant yesterday, an orca witness today. This is truly unprecedented. But even though this is highly unusual, I'm prepared to, to allow it. Bailiff, ready the witness telecast. We'll have a 10 minute recess while the telecast is being set up. God damn it, right? Exactly. I worked so hard for this, for this. <laughs> oh God. Leave it to you to think of something like calling Orla, Mr. Wright. Well, she's the only one who knows all the answers after all. I just talked to Pearl and she said Orla seems to be feeling fine. Now we have to try and figure out how Mr. Wright manipulated Orla. If we put Mr. I thought I saw something in my peripheral vision, but I was like, huh? <laughs> Thank you so much, Dra Dra Draco Bird, for the follow. Thank you. I hope you're ready for some orc action. <laughs> Hello. If we put Mr. Rhymes and Orla together, maybe we can get some kind of clue. And I can't forget about that strange set of prints of Rhymes's either. I really appreciate your trying to save both Orla and me. Uh, there go the lights that are supposed to show up. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Anyways. I had no idea Marlin hated Orla like that. I feel like I've been shocked by a torpedo ray. Of course he would hate the killer whale that murdered his girl girlfriend right in front of him. Oh, Mr. Bloom. You've been watching the trial? Oh, yes. I came to make a... Declaration of war. A declaration of war? No matter what the results of today's trial, I will report the truth in my new book. Even if that truth truth goes against what I wrote in The Killer Killer Whale. I don't know what the truth is. Not even about what happened a year ago. Dr. Crab, Azura died right in front of my eyes, in the middle of a pirate show. She suddenly fell from the orca's back and began to thrash around in pain. 
Yurika was singing a song and then started headbutting Asura over and over. Finally, Yorika took Asura in her mouth and brought her to the side of the pool. Just before she died, Asura was holding her chest in obvious pain. She was holding her chest? Wait a minute. Could it be... I don't think Orla was to blame for the incident a year ago either. What? I think the cause of Miss Summer's death might have been her heart condition. Heart condition? What heart condition? I never heard anything about it. Miss Summers had a prescription with Hickfield Clinic for a heart condition. The orca didn't kill her. I think it's possible her heart condition did. What? Asura had a heart condition too? I guess she hid it from everybody. Ortla? <laughs> Just like I did. That means... Yorka was innocent a year ago, too. It's just a theory, but... I think the Yorka headbutted Asura to check on her. And then did a lifesaver trick to rescue her. So there was no need to put the Yorka down, after all. So you really did intend to put Orla down? No. Jack and I... were against such a thing from the start. But you said you were going to euthanize the Orca! Yeah, I've been wondering about that. Dr. Crab, about this capsule. It's not a poison, but a sleeping drug, right? That's right. Even if Orla attacks someone. Or even if the Center for Dangerous Animal Control demands she be put down. I never had any intention of killing her. I would use sleeping pills to make it look like she was dead and then set her free. That's why I purchased so many sleeping capsules. Oh, that's why? I never considered the possibility that that poor woman's death was illness. She seems pretty disturbed to be wrong. I simply want to know the truth. That is why I will tell you who my client is. The day I witnessed the owner's death, I was there at the request of, of the animal keeper. Marlon Rhymes. That is correct. That day, my client called me to ask me to investigate the orca pool. He must have wanted to wanted you to witness what Orla was going to do. Why did you decide to tell us this? My desire to protect my client was standing in the way of the truth. I couldn't allow that. I will be watching to see how this all unfolds. Good luck to you, blue and yellow duo. Well, that was quite a bombshell she just dropped. And so casually, too. A woman really is a free spirit. You remember what you said yesterday, Mr. Lawyer. That you'd expose any secret if it would help save Sasha. I remember, it's my duty as a lawyer. Well, I just wanted you to know that I don't blame you for exposing the aquarium secret. It may put me in hot water, but if it helps save Yorka, let me clue you in on another secret. Focus on the Orca's song. The Orca's song, huh? And what could he be hinting at? Oh, Mr. Wright! Looks like it's time! All right, let's go back in. You got it, boss. We're gonna go in there and save Sasha and Orla. Together. I know, right? An orca. The court will now reconvene. Is the witness Orla Shipley commonly known as Orla Ready? Well, the orca is present, but I highly doubt she understands what's going on. Oh, ah, oh, just as adorable as yesterday. I distinctly remember you being afraid of her on several occasions. Now then, Mr. Wright, how do you propose to cross-examine the witness? I intend to have the young lady there with Orla help me. Hello, everyone. That young lady, didn't I meet her once before, a long time ago? Yes, that's Pearl Fay, my old friend. Well, well, didn't she grow up to be a lovely young lady? Ah! We have no interest in this chit-chat. On with the cross-examination. Mr. Wright, this is all your fault. Why are you dawdling? How is this my fault? The court will now hear the testimony of Aurea or Shipley.
Mr. Wright. <laughs> yes, Your Honor? I can't believe this guy. Do you seriously intend to cross-examine this orca? Well, she is a key witness for the defense after all, sir. Every time you come to my courtroom, you open my eyes to a new way of thinking. It appears this will be another one of those times. Yes, he's giving me the go-ahead. I now like to put the witness and Mr. Rhymes together to see how he manipulated or the orca. God. Hopefully, Warla will have some kind of reaction. Arr, fine by me, but not will happen, I tell ye. <laughs> Mr. Rhymes was right. Nothing happened. Guess I should have expected it to be easy. Shouldn't have expected it to be easy. Hmm, how did he manipulate her? Right, Dolo. I hope you realize. But if you can't prove how Rhymes manipulated the orca with this cross-exam, your defendant will be declared guilty immediately. Yes, I realize that. This is my last chance. I have to figure out how Rhymes commanded Orla to do her tricks. Please begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Anywhere. Hmm. This is your plan of action. If you are incapable of interpreting orca speech, this entire exercise is folly. Objection! You leave the interpretation of Orla's heart to me. All right, girl. What you gotta say? Let me hear it. Oh, Orla, you're so cute. Right, Dono. Surely you don't intend to continue this farce. I do. <laughs> Miss Shipley, please continue with your testimony. Could you interpret that for the court, Miss Sykes? I'm getting a strong reading of happiness. Maybe she thinks she's doing a show. I gave up my freedom for this girl. <laughs> I demand serious witness testimony. This is no time for fun and game. If you continue this mockery, I will subject you to 40 lashes with a wet fish. Not a wet noodle? That just sounds... fishy. Hey, speaking from experience, anything is better than 40 lashes from a whip. Ha 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 ha. Imagine the people that go into this game as like their first game. And then they're like, 40 lashes from a whip? What the hell is he talking about? What has he been through? <laughs> and, it's, and it's just some prosecutor that just whips everything and everyone. The defense will please ca caution its witness to conduct herself with propriety. <laughs> Hold it. Um, instead of impersonating a one orca band, could you show us the lifesaver trick? Guess Orla won't do what you want unless you give her the proper signal. Oh, doesn't Orla sing beautifully? Hmm, Paka's singing voice is much more melodic and clear. <laughs> eh, neither one should quit their day job. Please continue your testimony, Miss Shipley. Oh god. Hold it! Hmm, Miss Shipley seems to want to communicate something. Perhaps she's hungry. Miss Fay, could you give Miss Shipley a snack? Certainly. One moment. What a heartwarming scene. It reminds me of my granddaughter with her pet. Oh, your granddaughter must have a pretty large pet. Stop all this pet prattle and get on with the cross-examination. But 
she's such an adorable creature. I never get tired of looking at her. Silence. I, on the other hand, have had my, more than my fill of this tomfoolery. Enough is enough. It sounds like Prosecutor Blackwell is about to blow his top. What should I do? Should I continue the cross-examination? I'm gonna stop here. I'm done playing games. I will now explain how Orla was manipulated by Mr. Rhymes. In order to respond to a command, Orla needs to hear the sound of a whistle. But Mr. Rhymes isn't a trainer. He doubt he'd know how to give the signals himself. So that means... He must have had help. So how did Mr. Rhymes issue commands to Orla? Take that! Sasha told me an interesting story about Miss Summers. And Sora used to send her boyfriend videos of herself teaching the orca tricks. He used to help Asura take the videos on her TV phone. Most likely, Mr. Ryan still has these videos of Miss Summers. Miss Faye, could I ask for your help? Of course, Mr. Nick. What is it? You're using Mr. Rhymes' TV phone, correct? I'd like you to examine it for me. Please look for videos of Asura Summers issuing whistle commands to Orla. Um, videos? I'm not too sure how to do that, but I'll give it a try. My apologies to Marlin. Right, Dono. What are you up to? You will see in a moment if Pearls can find those videos for me. Mr. Nick, I found them! I found some videos like you described! You did? Thank you, Miss Faye. Just as I suspected. How did Marlin Rhymes get Orla to do those tricks? I will now show you. With Mr. Rhymes' cell phone. His cell phone? Are you implying he used an app? Miss Faye, see if you can issue Orla and command. A, 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 a command. Me? I can do- can I do such a thing? You might be able to if you play a video with a whistle signal in it. If there's a video of the lifesaver trick, please play that. Before you do though, please put the practice dummy in the pool. The practice dummy? Alright. And it goes. There. It sank to the bottom. Now I'll play a video. Orla's diving down, heading straight for the dummy. <laughs> what a smart girl you are, Orla. The lifesaver trick was a complete success, Mr. Nick. Thank you, Miss Faye. You were a big help. Now I have proof. Hmm. Unbelievable. You actually pulled it off. That was... The lifesaver trick we saw yesterday. Is Miss Faye an orca trainer now? No, oh, Your Honor. I'll explain after we try one more trick. Now let's see if we can command Orla to do the singing trick. Miss Faye, if there's a video of the singing trick, please play that. Certainly. Let's see. Is it this video? Isn't she wonderful? That was a swashbuckler spectacular song. Oh, oh what a lovely singing voice. Hm. It wasn't bad. And by the way, how did Miss Faye give the orca those commands? Marlon Rhymes has something on his phone that his girlfriend Azura Summer sent him. There are videos of Miss Summers issuing commands. Summers issuing commands to Orla with a whistle. If they have Orla listen to the sounds of the signals, anyone at all could command Orla. Oh my, anyone at all? Yes, I believe so, Your Honor. All they would have to do is play those videos. Mr. Wright, please admit those videos as evidence. I'm getting the sneaking suspicion the judge just wants to try it out for himself. Miss Faye, could you send those videos to the TV phone here? 
All right, certainly. Got him. All right. I'll try playing one. That was so cute. So this was a training session a year ago, huh? Wait a minute, there's something about that song that bothers me. If the orca can be commanded using videos on the cell phone, then that means that Marlon Rhymes could have manipulated the creature. What I am so shocked about, and I keep bringing this up because I think it's so, so incredibly funny, is the fact that the quality for this looks like complete ass, but this is set in like 2027. <laughs> That's so cute. Arr. Mr. Rhymes, you can't walk talk your way out of the out of it now. Silence. Hmm. I have to commend you. That was very good proof. I can see Marlon Rhymes could have manipulated the orca. But isn't it true that the defendant could have done it as well? All she would have to do is use the whistle. The whistle she knows how to use so well. And she wouldn't have had to use those videos. Surely you admit that's a po it's a possibility. That too. <laughs> Can we hug orcas? Uh, at your own discretion, probably, but <laughs> yeah. What is it with Simon Say? We've already been through that it's a uh, it's in a ponytail. For a baby penguin. <laughs> Surely I admit it's a possibility. She could have easily had Norma Norma more Norma the plume witness the singing and the lifesaver trick. So he's trying to argue it was equally possible for Sasha as it was for Rhymes, is he? Is that true? Let me think about that for a minute. That's right, those weren't just simple cries, it was singing. As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. It kept headbutting while it sang the swashbuckler spectacular song. The culprit made sure Mr. Plume heard the song and saw the lifesaver trick. Could Sasha have shown these two tricks to the witness? She couldn't have. No, I don't think Miss Buckler could have created the same conditions as the, as the culprit. You challenge me to a battle. I hope your sword is sharpened. Let me see those sword skills, those sword skills of yours. Don't you worry, my sword is drawn and ready. My sword is evidence that the two tricks couldn't have been shown at the same time. Whistle. Mr. Plume said in her testimony that she witnessed these two tricks at the same time. However, that fact is inconsistent with how Orla performs tricks. How Orla performs tricks. What are you talking about? Orla can't perform two tricks at once. She performs only one trick per whistle signal. That's how she's been trained. Hmm, in other words, it would be just like with the dog. If you tell him to both sit and shake, he won't do them both. He won't do them at the same time. Am I understanding it correctly? Yes, and that's the idea, Your Honor. I wonder if the judge has a dog. <laughs> what a farce. So are you saying that the witness somehow managed to produce an impossible scenario? Arr, if the creature's own trainer couldn't do it, how could I? Yes, it's a mystery, isn't it? Boss. 
You don't have to agree so cheerfully. Uh... Yeah, you are. <laughs> The defense is claiming that Marlin Ranks manipulated the Orca. But if you cannot explain how fully how this was done, your argument doesn't hold water. If you can't straighten out your own theory, would you like me to straighten you out? Straighten you out? <laughs> um, no thank you. Hmm, so Orla can't do two tricks at a time, but Mr. Plume saw her do it. This logical inconsistency means there's a flaw somewhere. And was Mr. Plume lying? Or is it not true that Orla can't do two tricks at a time? And Mr. Plume had no reason to lie about such a thing. If it really is impossible for Orla to perform two tricks at once, then maybe either the lifesaver trick or the singing trick was... Faked. Faked. Yes, maybe Orla only performed one of the tricks. But it was made to look like she performed two. Silence. Maybe. How can you how do you expect to conduct a sword battle with conjecture? Sounds like I'd better present some evidence here, and fast. Although I am concerned about your profuse sweating, Mr. Wright, allow me to ask you. Which of the two was faked? The lifesaver trick or the singing trick? The song. The defense wishes to argue that the singing trick was faked. And on what grounds do you base your assertion that the singing trick was faked? Uh. Take that! This is a recording of a recent Swashbuckler Spectacular. In this recording, Orla sings the same song she sang for Miss Faye earlier. But Mr. Plume said this song is different from the one sang. From the one sang a year ago, isn't it sung? The song is different. Please listen to this song in in the video from a year ago sent to to this cell phone. Yes, it sounds quite different from the from the song Orla sang for Miss Faye earlier. And yet, this is the same video Miss Faye used to issue the command to Orla to sing. By having Mr. Plume listen to the song recorded in the cell phone video. The true culprit made Mr. Plume think Orla was singing the song from a year ago. Only Marlon Rhymes, the owner of the cell phone videos, could have done this. Silence. But Mr. Plume said she heard the orca singing right in front of her. How do you claim he made her think that? How was the song recording played? I intend to explain that too, of course. What? The answer lies somewhere in the orca pool visitor's corridor. Marlon Rhymes played the song recording by using this. <laughs> Mr. Plume heard the song while she was in the Orca Pool's Pool Visitor's Corridor. And there's a speaker in that corridor, so that visitors can hear the Orca's sounds. And you claim the song was played from that speaker. How? Here's how Ryan's played the song over the speaker in the Visitor's Corridor. Uh... The walkie-talkie! Mr. Rhymes could broadcast the song in, in the video to the speaker by using a walkie-talkie. And he could get Orla to do a trick by letting her hear Miss Summer's whistle signal too. He played the singing through the speaker and he made Orla do the lifesaver trick. All of this was the doing of the true culprit, Marlon Rhymes. Ugh. This is what you did, isn't it, Mr. Rhymes? Ugh. Arr. You did it! Now we can save both Sasha and Orla! 
Oh boy. Here we fucking go. Just leave it to Captain Wright's swashbuckling lawyers to win any case. I don't remember agreeing to that name. So it actually was possible for Mr. Ryan to manipulate the Orca. I'm stunned. I see we will need to hear more of this wit more from this witness. Mr. Ranks, the time has come for you to tell the court the truth. Hmm. <laughs> oh boy. So I used the walkie talkie, you say? Arr, sorry, but you're dead wrong, me bucko. It'd be impossible, says I. What do you mean, impossible? I shall sing you a little shanty dis in your scurvy theory. Hark you well yet now. <laughs> oh my god. The dis in the Phoenix right. <laughs> oh god. Yo, walkie talkie be broke for real. Mr. Lawyer's freeze, I got no appeal. Broke the fort plume on the sea. Broke before wreck could ever dream. Legit goof during cleaning time, eh? <laughs> but Phil sucking lawyers spin lies. That Orca yo don't listen to me, Kay. Kill the cap? Yo, you so cray cray. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Uh. <laughs> Here we go again with that flip-flop music. Broken? Of all the flames, the excuses. Bilge sucking? I wasn't called for. Do I want to know what that means? <laughs> I do, apparently. Okay, hold on. Uh, dictionary. No. So it's like some nautical term, like either of the rounded areas that form the transition between the bottom and sides of the exterior of a hole, and also bilges in a hole with a double bottom, an enclosed area between frames at each side of the of the floors where seepage collects, also called bilge well, a well into which seepage drains to be pumped away. Ah, okay, I, I see. So it's I see I can't really put it into words, but I think I th I think I get it. <laughs> it's like this nasty water. Would be my guest anyways. A <laughs> very uncomplimentary adjective. <laughs> You probably broke it on purpose after the fact. Arr, that'd be untrue, little lassie. Although I can't prove it it really was. Lucky be it for me, you lawyers be the ones who have the proven to do. Ah, uh, after everything we've uncovered, he still won't admit it. Somehow, I have to prove that he still could have done it. Once you've recovered from rhyme sick birds, <laughs> press the third statement. All right, I'll I'll press the third statement. You made a big blunder. What happened? After I helped Sasha with the cleaning, I dropped by dropped it by accident and broke broke it broke it. I wish to see it. I still have it with me. Mm, it does indeed appear to be broken. <laughs> with me walkie talkie broken. There'd be no way I could have done what you said. I couldn't have given the orca any commands. 
Oh, your walkie-talkie broke. Isn't that just so convenient? Mr. Rhymes, I think you broke it on purpose. Miss Lawyer, none of your false accusations, if you please. I broke it on purpose. Where, you, where be your proof? Aww. I don't have any proof. If his monkey-talkie was broken, it throws a monkey... monkey wrench into my whole theory. When he let Pearls borrow his telephone so casually yesterday, he must have already been confident I wouldn't be able to prove anything. Ah, ah. You'll never get me to agree that the poxed orca be innocent. If something be not done about her, she'll get Sasha one day too. And the orca killed the captain. It weren't me. Hmm. So you intend to continue to claim that the defendant is innocent, do you? But I won't stand for that. Now then, right Dono, what's your next move? Your honor, I would like to examine that walkie-talkie if you don't mind. Certainly. Here you are. Let's see if there is any way to tell when the walkie-talkie was broken. If he gave Orla the, c the command, then it couldn't have been broken at the time. I'm pretty sure I've already said it, like, twice. <laughs> and I was like, oh, look, it's a marlin. Because that's the fish he was holding. Yeah, I know how to rotate the evidence. Okay, whatever. Zoom, whatever. Wee, wee. Huh? Look at these. They look like tooth marks. Hey, you're right. <laughs> it's a Pokedex sable. Ah, yeah. I wonder if it was Orla. Wait, a walkie-talkie with tooth marks. Didn't we hear a story like that just yesterday? It was the walkie-talkie Azura used right up, to, up until her death. In the middle of the show, the orca brought Azura up to the surface in her mouth. No, sorry, I'm just thinking about the next game because... <laughs> sorry. She left tooth marks in Azura's walkie-talkie. The captain said he always kept that walkie-talkie with him so he'd never forget. I said this walkie-talkie was his. But could it be? <laughs> Not odd about it. Don't you agree? Arr, time to give it up, Mr. Lawyer. Forget the orca. Just save Sasha, says I. I can't do that. Now that I'm finally a lawyer again, how could I hold my head up if I made my client so miserable? Arr, a stubborn one you be. Now that I'm a lawyer again and defending an orca. <laughs> the walkie-talkie that the witness brought with him to court today may have been stolen from the victim, Mr. Jack Shipley. Our aquarium may look like a band of pirates, but theory? Arr. According to the defendant's statement, Mr. Shipley talked to her on his walkie-talkie before his death. However, no walkie-talkie was found near the victim's body. Arr, me thinks the police just didn't look hard enough. Besides, the captain's walkie-talkie wasn't broken, be that not right. So his walkie-talkie was not- has not to do with mine. I'm not so sure that's true. Nothing has made sense from the get-go, you're perfectly fine. <laughs> the victim fell to his death, it's quite possible his walkie-talkie broke in the fall. You stole the walkie-talkie after the victim's death, didn't you, Mr. Rhymes? Silence. I will not allow such leading questions, right, Donald? If you claim the walkie-talkie belonged to the victim, show me your evidence. Certainly, I plan on doing just that. 
Please look at these tooth, tooth marks here on the walkie-talkie. Tooth marks? Mama, yes, I see them. The victim's walkie-talkie. It was a keepsake that used to belong to Azura Summers, who died a year ago. These tooth marks were left by Orla when she carried Miss Summers in her mouth. Hmm, if this is Mr. Shipley's walkie-talkie. Then Mr. Rhymes' walkie-talkie is still unaccounted for. Which means he could have used it to command the orca after all. And that's not all, Your Honor. The only one who could have taken the victim's walkie-talkie is the culprit himself. Arr. The fact that Marlon Rhymes had the victim's walkie-talkie is proof that he murdered Jack Shipley. Sink me. Arr. <sighs> Do you give up now? Not so fast, Mr. Lawyer. What? He still won't admit it? This walkie-talkie be mine, says I. And how do you explain the tooth marks on it? I should put down rhymes. I've had many, many the running with that orca myself. Arr! She beat me more than once, and me walkie-talkie too. Evidence of our fights are carved here into me body. My goodness, I can clearly see the tooth mark scars on your skin. What? Are those really scars from being bitten by Orla? Ahoy! Yo, yo, ho, ho! You want answers? I got some, mate! The scars are from Orla? That's right. Them girl can put up a nasty fight. That orca bit me and left me scarred. Kept, had her up to protect, so I went in hard. So, Mr. Lawyer, I win. Just being frank. And Orla? Heh. <laughs> you get the plank. I can't let him run this show. I have to find a way to prove the walkie-talkie belonged to the victim. And you can forget about fingerprints. They always keep me walkie-talkie clean and polished. This man had everything worked out before he even took the stand. But I won't give up. There has to be a way. Mr. Wright, I found something interesting. The tooth marks on the walkie-talkie. Notice anything about them? Anything funny about them? Oh, funny. I didn't even see that. Funny? Funny how? Something is different about them compared to the other tooth marks we've seen. Hmm. The only ones I remember are the ones on the practice dummy. It's just a tiny difference. It might not even mean anything. Right now, we need to consider every possibility we can, no matter how small. If I can figure out what's different about the bite marks... Maybe I can somehow prove Rhymes' walkie-talkie actually belonged to the victim. Think, Phoenix. You can turn everything around, right here and now. Yes! Time to review the facts we have so far. With the, with the intent of killing Orla, Rhymes drained the show's stage pool. Uh, but Rhymes failed to kill Orla, and instead he tried to pin Sh Shipley's murder on Orla. Big brain phoenix, let's go. In order to manipulate Orla, Rhymes must have used a cell phone and a walkie-talkie. But the walkie-talkie Rhymes has is broken. I think it's the victim's walkie-talkie, the, the one he kept as a memento of Azura Summers. I have to find a way to prove that, that it is indeed the victim's walkie-talkie. Which piece of evidence left on the walkie-talkie could prove it belongs to the victim? Tooth marks. We have two pieces of evidence with tooth marks, the walkie-talkie and the dummy. What's striking about these two pieces of evidence? The tooth marks are different. When I look closely, I see two different bite mark patterns. Hmm. Two variations, huh? Wasn't there a trick of Orla that had two different variations as well? The show song. 
A year ago, the orca's song and teeth marks were different from what they are now. What could be the cause of these two inconsistencies? What's behind the fact of, that the orca's tooth marks and song were different a year ago? It was a different orca. I'm I'm having I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> I love this part of the game. I'm starting to think. There are two different orcas: the one a year ago and Orla now. And if the orca a year ago wasn't Orla, it means the bite mark on the walkie-talkie isn't Orla's, like Rhymes said it was. And we can finally prove the walkie-talkie belongs to the victim. Mr. Wright, you appear to be lost in thought. There, is everything all right? I, I just realized something. Astonishing, Your Honor. Your face is what's astonishing, right, Dono? Your rudeness is what's astonishing, Prosecutor Blackwell. <laughs> Galaxy Brain Phoenix. And what is this astonishing thing you realized? Until just now, I thought the Orca Ship Ship Aquarium a year ago and Orla were the same Orca. <laughs> he ascended. However, two inconsistencies led me to a new fact. It's, uh, it's Edgeworth that taught him how to logic. Because they're very similar. Like... Not gonna lie. However, true inconsistencies led me to a new fact. And that fact is that there might be two Aura Shipleys. What? Two different Orcas? But that's impossible. Order! Order in the court! Explain yourself. What is the basis for this preposterous claim? And the Orcas show song a year ago and the one now are different. I believe it's because the orca a year ago was a different orca. Two different orcas, two different songs. It explains the show song contradiction. What be this bilge water talk? I don't understand. I am talking about the truth. Truth that will finally catch you out in your lies. You claim that the truth marks in the walkie talkie were Orla's, but that's not true. The two different bike mark patterns and the walkie talkie on the walk-in, on the dummy proves this. What? Two different patterns, you say? Silence. Well, I will concede there is a possibility that two different orcas exist. Bite mark patterns alone are not proof enough. I want more conclusive evidence. Alright. I will show you conclusive evidence then. So he wants to see evidence other than, than the bite mark patterns, does he? The orca Yirigo and Orla have different songs and different teeth. And I have two videos on hand that can be used to compare those differences. I will now submit two videos with which the different songs and teeth can be compared. I mean, it's... This. And here is the other. Please compare these two videos, one from a year ago and one recent. As discussed, the two orcas are singing two different songs. Please also pay special attention to the appearance of the two orcas teeth. How exactly do you claim their teeth are different? Let's look for shots in the two videos where the orcas teeth are shown. This is Orla in the recent video of the Swashbuckler Spectacular Show. Pirate Show. As you can see, she has all of her teeth. What a healthy smile she has. I'm a bit envious. Next, let's take a look at the TV phone video from a year ago. Just as I thought, their teeth are different. Oh, I believe this smile looks a little different from the one we saw a moment ago. As you can see, the orca from a year ago has one tooth that's broken off. <laughs> if the teeth are different, then... Yes, if the teeth are different, they of course leave different bike mark patterns. On the practice dummy, you can see Orla's uniform pattern. Uniform pattern with all teeth intact and on the walkie-talkie you can see that one tooth is missing 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 from the pattern I see it just like the smile of that orca in last year's video 
The tooth marks on the walkie-talkie were not made by the orca we know as Orla. They were made a year ago by a different orca. Two different orcas. I can't believe it. The statement that the tooth... The statement that the tooth marks on the, on the walkie-talkie were from Orla was a lie. The truth is, this walkie-talkie was stolen from the victim, Jack Shipley. And the only person who could have stolen it is... The true culprit, Marlon Rhymes. No, you got it all wrong. It be all... The fault of that orca. Oh, huh? Arr. You got it all wrong. Blimey. It'd be the orca's fault. This can't be. Arr. Once again, I'm too weak to help anybody. Well, that was a scene. Well, it would appear. We should hear more from the defendant about Aura Shipley. Sasha Buckler. Yes, Captain Judge? Yeah, me too. <laughs> He's just like throwing himself from side to side in the... <sighs> Miss, what Mr. Wright claims true? Are there two different orcas? I... I, uh... The secret that Ship Ship Aquarium was hiding was about Orla, wasn't it? Dr. Crab told me to focus on the orca's song. He hinted it would be a clue. Phoenix is right. Phoenix is right. <laughs> the one we call Orla is the second Aura Shipley. There actually used to be two orcas at Ship Ship Aquarium. I used to call the first Aura Shipley just Aura for short. Aura and Orla are sisters. The captain rescued them both when they got beached on the shore. But Orla was in bad shape and the ship's doctor had to look after her for a long time. Both orcas loved the captain, so we decided to keep them on at Ship Shape Aquarium. Why didn't you say anything about there being two orcas? Well, because... After the accident a year ago, Aura was put down. What? Aura is dead? Yeah, the Center for Dangerous Animal Control demanded it. Apparently, the captain and the ship's doctor begged them. We put the first one down, so please leave the second one alone, they said. Anyway, after the accident a year ago, the captain told us he was going to, going to put Orla in the pirate show as Aura Shipley. He asked us to keep quiet about Aura's death until the time was right. Hmm, what a surprising and complex tale. Did all ship ship aquarium employees know about this? No. Just a select few of us. Mr. Rhymes, did you know about it? Of course not. How could I? How would I? Tell me, Mr. Rhymes, did you plan on killing Orla from the start? Yeah, I planned to do it during the clean, so I drained the pool. I figured if I didn't do something about that beast, Sasha's life was in danger. Sasha trusted that orca just as much as Sasura did. I wanted to protect her. I couldn't help Asura, so I felt like protecting Sasha was the least I could do. My duty. I built up my strength so I'd be ready to kill the orca. I even fought with sharks. But the captain realized my plan and tried to save the orca. And that is why you killed Jack Shipley. But they tried releasing her. That's the thing. Like, She doesn't want to be released. She keeps coming back. <laughs> Ah, now the report from the crime lab finally makes sense. Report from the, from the crime lab? 
In court yesterday, you will recall I showed a photo of the victim lying on his back. According to the lab, the bruise on the victim's right wrist was Rhymes' handprint. His... handprint? I didn't know how it fit in with the case until I heard Rhymes' story just now. But now we can imagine the reason for it being there. Rhymes must have made the handprint when he fought with the victim over the orca. A handprint made during a struggle? I don't care what happens to me anymore. I deserve the death penalty. Well, yeah, you, you got a point there. I'm not gonna lie, like, obviously. But what if it doesn't want to be released? What then? I'm the one that killed the captain. Please give Sasha her not guilty verdict. <laughs> you accept your defeat well, I see. Let me be your guide to hell. Get on with the verdict, your baldness. Hmm, it seems this unprecedented trial that began with an orca as the defendant has finally come to a close. Sasha is saved! Orla is going to be so happy! Sasha's not guilty verdict is coming. Why do I still have this strange nagging feeling? Rhymes' handprint on the victim's right wrist. Was it really the result of a deadly struggle over the orca? I can't shake the feeling. That handprint had some other... Has some other hidden meaning. Is this trial going to end without revealing the whole truth? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Sasha Buckler. Your Honor, please hold off on that verdict. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? I would like to further explore this new evidence the prosecution just admitted. What do you remember? <laughs> or do you just like, say like, I remember now, as in like the thing that every single witness says. But what complaint could you have? You are about to get your not guilty verdict. I see no need to further prolong this trial, Mr. Wright. Your Honor, we still don't know the entire truth of this case. This unnatural handprint Mr. Rhymes left on the victim's right wrist. I don't think it was the result of a fight between the two men. Not the result of a fight. Then what do you suggest it was? Boss, what are you doing? You remember that evidence we found at the show stage? Evidence? What evidence? A mysterious mark might be the key to understanding the whole case. Your Honor, the defense would like to submit evidence that will expose the truth of this case. A mysterious piece of evidence that pairs with Mr. Rhymes' unnatural handprint. Take that. Marlon Rhymes left behind a very unusual set of fingerprints at the show stage. In what way were they unusual? They were right hand prints on the left side of the ladder. If one were to grasp the ladder in the same way as the prince, it would look like this. Hmm, it looks like the ladder is being grasped from above. Exactly, Your Honor. And the handprint on the victim's right wrist shows it was held with a powerful grip. Marlon Rhymes grasped the show stage ladder in an in an unnatural pose. If he was gripping the victim's wrist in this position, Gripping the victim's wrist. Then it must have been. It means Mr. Rhymes was Rhymes was actually. That's right. If we couple the unnatural handprint with the mysterious fingerprints. We see that Marlon Rhymes was trying to save the victim's life. What? That can't be. It's 
Impossible. Why don't we ask Mr. Rhymes himself? Yeah. I... Mr. Rhymes, we want to hear the truth directly from you. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Mr. Lawyer. You got skills. Why? Why did you have to figure it out? It doesn't matter what happens to me anymore. I'm ready to die. So is what the defense is claiming true? The captain. He found out I drained the show stage pool. He rushed to the side of the pool, frantic to put some water in for the orca. And then... he slipped. Captain! Give me your left hand! No, Marlin. You'll fall too. Forgive me, Marlin. I didn't realize what deep pain you were in. But please... Please don't blame Orla. It's nobody's fault. Not Orla's. And not yours. Hey! Captain! So... Jack Shipley's death was accidental. Why didn't you tell us that you didn't kill the victim? Because I have no right to live anymore. I'm ready to get the death penalty. The captain died because of me. And then on top of it all, I used his body to frame Orla. I was gonna kill Orla, and she wasn't even to blame. She didn't do anything wrong. The only thing I can do now is pay for it all with my life. I can't do anything. I couldn't save the captain. I couldn't avenge, avenge Asura's death. Mr. Rhymes, you have the wrong idea about Mr. Miss Summer's death. Not even the first Aura Shipley was responsible for her dying. Aura, of her own accord, was trying to save Miss Summer's life. What? What are you talking about? Asura Summer suffered from a heart condition. But she didn't tell anyone and she performed in the pirate show anyway. She had a heart attack and died before anyone could save her. I'm sure she didn't think Aura attacked her. There's nothing to avenge. No way. A heart condition. She never said a word about it. What's with these girls and not telling people, Hey, uh, I might have a fucking heart attack at any fucking given time. So, just a warning, I fucking guess? No? Okay. Maybe she didn't want you to worry about her. Ayo. Um... You know, it would be more worrisome if, um... Uh, if you're just hanging out with your girlfriend and then suddenly she just like... Just... Something happens and you're like, what the fuck? What the fuck? That's more worrisome. Yes, yeah, something... You... Sometimes you need to be worried. So I wanted to get revenge all this time. For nothing. So, neither case was murder. Not a year ago, and not this time either. Your responsibility in this matter is great, but I believe you can be rehabilitated. Rehabilitated. Marlin, you better come back to Ship Ship Aquarium when you're done, you hear? Yeah, exactly. It's much better to be aware that some things can happen. And knowing what to do in that situation than just 
not being told anything and then something happens and you're like mm, what's going on i don't understand and then the the paramedics show up and you're like i don't know she just kind of like keeled over you know she just started having spasms and it's just like does she have a heart condition no she never told me about it And not only that, but like she didn't tell anyone. I feel like it... that's like so important to tell. Like I fucking tell people about my fucking anxiety all the time. Like when I went to Japan, I was like, "Hey, uh, if I get like a an, uh, like an anxiety attack or like a panic attack or whatever, just like try to like calm me down and stuff." Luckily, it didn't happen, but I had to make sure that, like, they were aware of, like, things that could happen. So that they're, like, not just, like, sitting there like, mm -hmm, I don't know what to do. That's way worse. You gotta make people aware of things, you know? Marla and I and everybody will be waiting for you. Exactly. You still have a lot to offer, Mr. Rhymes. Live your life and never give up. For the sake of those who are gone as well. I... I promise to make up for what I've done. Even if it takes my, my whole life. Mr. Wright. Sasha. Thank you. Well, I have seen countless trials, but never one that ended like this. I don't know how, Mr. Wright, but you always seem to manage to turn things around. I think all this excitement has taken a few years off of my life. Is that praise or a diss? Now then, this court finds the defendant, Sasha Buckler. Oh, here come the demons. They're here. Oh my god. Speed 50%. Oh, 69. Nice. Court is now adjourned. Yay. Congratulations on your win! Yeah. Huh. Thank you for all your help today, Pearls. All I did was have fun with Orla. Orla, I'm back. Oh, I missed you, girl. So happy for you and Orla, Sasha. Everything turned out great. Phoenix, Athena, I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Orla and I are both really grateful. I will now act out my gratitude with a little performance. Arr! Miss Orca lover, don't you think you'd better take care of your health first? Uh, all right. Fine. I promise. No more shows until I'm better. I don't want anybody to worry about me after all. Good. I'm glad that's settled. Hey, buddy. Mr. Lawyer. You just had to blab every single one of the, of the aquarium secrets, didn't you? I'm sorry, Dr. Crab. Nah, that's alright. I'm glad. It was kind of hard to tell. Although, thanks to you, they now know we're using the illegal torpedo system. But I think we'll be able to wiggle out of, a, of serious repercussions somehow. That writer lady is advocating for us, saying the law itself is to blame. 
She said she's going to look into getting the, the law changed. Go, oh, Mr. Plume! She sure is a powerhouse. There's one thing you didn't figure out, by the way. Keep this to yourself, will you? We don't want it getting out publicly. Remember that appointment I had written down in my calendar? Oh, you mean meet the captain at the Orca Pool at 7 a.m.? That note meant the Orca Pool of the Supermarine Aquarium, not Ship Shapes. What? Why were you supposed to meet there? Jack and I. We visited the Supermarine Aquarium once a month. Any idea why? Why do you think they went to visit the Supermarine Aquarium once a month? Any guesses? Any guesses at all? Um, to get dolphin therapy treatment? No, silly. Remember I told you. Jack and I were against putting the orca down from the start. What? You mean... We just pretended to put the first aura Shipley down. The Supermarine Aquarium is harboring her for us. What? Oh, so that talk about large amounts of money you were paying them. Once a month, the owner and the vets disappear from this aquarium. And I came to find out that each time a large amount of money was being paid out. You were paying for Aura's care. You wouldn't believe how much fish orcas eat. Now that it has been proven she was innocent all along, I think we can bring her back soon. Until then, keep it under your hat, okay? Huh? What was he telling you about? Oh, nothing much. By the way, Orla wants to give you her little celebratory prize. Wants you to give her a little celebratory prize. Orla specifically requested that you give it to her, Phoenix. <laughs> Alright, fine. Let's see, what can I give her? Orla, it's coming a day late, but congratulations on your verdict. I love this so much. Kiss trick. Oh, Orla! I want to be next! That was so cute. And so the curtain fell on my first trial in years. I'm looking forward to the comeback of, a, of Sasha and Orla's swashbuckler spectacular. After all, I made a comeback of my own. As a lawyer. A few months later. It's been a while since I visited Ship Shape Aquarium. Now that Sasha has recovered from her illness, she is performing today. There's still some time before the show starts. I think I'll wander around a bit. Hi, Phoenix. Hope you enjoyed the show today. The orcas are excited and ready to go. Oh, I'm sure I'll enjoy- wait. Wait a minute. Did you say orcas, as in pl plural? Yep, let me show you. What? Two Orlas? Don't tell me. Yep, you caught it right. Aura Shipley the first has returned to Ship Ship Aquarium. Maybe the three pirate sisters are. We be out to stop the evil Scalawag League led by Red Stash and the giant octopus. I don't want to get in the way of their rehearsal. Guess I'd better go. Well, if it isn't Blue Boy, did you come for my book signing? Oh, Mr. Plume, 
There's a book signing? Yes, my new book is just out. It's called Ship Ship Aquarium. Don't pull the plug. The, pl the book signing will be held here in this room. After all, the vet owes me a favor. Yes, she got them to approve the use of the torpedo. I'm grateful. Why does she keep coming to my lab to bother me every single day? My next work will be entitled Sniper. The penguin leaves the nest. <laughs> uh, stop this cacophony. Why am I surrounded by carping females? Gee, Dr. Crab gets all the ladies. I guess I'll leave him to it. Oops, it's almost time for the show. Where have you been, Daddy? Polly and I... Polly and Athena already went in. I'm leaving. I, I bought some souvenirs to take back to the village. Sorry to keep you waiting. I bet they'll love your souvenirs back home, Pearls. By the way, I hear a certain someone is going to be in today's show. A certain someone? I wonder who it could be. Oh, it's almost time. The show's just about to start. Alright, let's go to the show stage then. Save your own seats, Mr. Wright. Oh, I can't believe I get to see the show again. I'm so happy. I want to dive in the pool. You'd better not. I think they'd call security. You're welcome in the pool anytime, Athena. But Red Stash is the best swimmer of all. Huh? Who have you got playing Red Stash's role? Sasha, Ora and Orla are ready to go. Hey, I know that voice. Yep, you may know it. Marlin is back, and he's playing the role of Red Stash. Why are you mad? It'd be the new Swashbuckler Spectacular. Hope you enjoy it, me buckos. No. Oh, no. That sounds awful. Why on the carpet? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Video? Oh, kind of. And so, our pirates set sail for bluer seas under a sunnier sky. As for me, I set foot into the world of law once more as a full-time lawyer. Yay! No way! Are you kidding me? I thought that was only in Japan! Fuck! Now I'm upset! I couldn't- No! No, fuck! I, I could That is indeed what you think it is! I could have had him walking around in this all the time! <laughs> oh my god! Fuck! Ah, fuck! Damn it! <laughs> Sorry, I love this cutscene so much. It's so cute. Dumbo. Also this. So cute. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Is um Vast, 
mateys, land lovers ho, hand o'er all your gold. Village plunder, then feast like kings, them's the joys of piracy. Nice. Cute. Anyways, <laughs> that was it. That was it for Dual Destinies. Hold on. Uh, I'm so select. Can I just like. I can go chapter select! Oh, you're giving me way too much. Mm hmm. Oh, you can literally. Uh, God, where was it? That is, too, that is too much power. Oh, you fucking know what I'm about to do. You know what I'm about to do. You know what I'm about to do. Hold on. Uh, let me just see. It was here somewhere. I gotta go. Okay, it's after Blackwell. Uh, it's, I believe it may be this, here, or is that just straight with you? One. Yes! <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on. Is there a problem with her confession? It's the, um... The katana. Objection. Objection. Uh. Damn, what was it here? I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. I can literally just... I think it's here, and then I just have to, like... Oh, come on! Just... There we go. Please. You put it that way, I'm not sure. No, it's not that? Hold on. Mm. Damn it, then I guess it wasn't that. That's fine. Why is it so confusing? I don't get it. I love how it literally gives me this option, though. <laughs> hmm. It's not here. Nope. It's not there. Yeah, I get it. I love how I can literally just go back to this point. <laughs> like, almost directly. That's way too much power. Objection. Objection. 
I know it's the wiping blood, I'm dumbass. The blood was wiped off the handle. Hmm. Uh oh, I got the home treatment. I shouldn't have to explain the implications of your own argument to you, right? But all your claim suggests is that Miss Sykes wiped the blood off herself after the fact. I knew that. I know that bluffing your way through things is your calling card. But your credibility phoned just now and told me to tell you to put a sock in it. Y yes, Daddy. This just hits different. You know, it just hits different. <laughs> I love how this is the thing that you can do. Damn it, I knew I... Because ah. so, I was like thinking like, I knew that you could unlock it, but I didn't know that you can like unlock it with this version. I thought it was only with the... With the Japanese version because there's like this like quiz thing and then you can unlock it. We're having daddy moments again. Uh, yes. But this time it was Feeny. <laughs> anyway. Ha! Huh. That was amazing. Like, ugh, god damn it. If I knew it, I would have done. I would have done the. Turnabout reclaimed earlier. Because I knew that it was like the uh, the other way. What's it? The. <laughs> Where is the. Um... Ben. Bum. Wait, is this the, um, decrypted? Gotta install Spirit of Justice, wherever the hell I put that. <laughs> Also, find the it has to be here, right? When did I get this? Does it say okay? Yeah, it was a, a lot of fun. Does it work? Well, I wanted to install it, but sure. Whoa. Well, that worked. <laughs> Anyways. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Damn it. Well, I'll look into it anyways. I know it should be rel rel relatively easy to install, but... Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this now. I think I'm gonna take tomorrow off anyways. So, I'll be back on Monday. And who knows what I'll do for Tuesday. I'll be back on Wednesday, though, most likely, because I do want to do a... a, a, a a birthday stream. You know, it's not gonna be anything special. It's just gonna be a stream on my birthday. <laughs> so yeah, I hope to see you again then. And until then, I'm gonna struggle with the uh, getting Spirit of Justice to work. It was a lot of fun, and we got to see Feeny calling Edgeworth daddy, because I feel like that's something everyone needs. <laughs> yeah. 
that's really all I have to say. I hope you all have a, a great rest of the weekend, and uh, I'll see you again on Monday. I love you all a lot. <laughs> and it's so nice of you to just drop by here and spend some time with me, even if you're not in chat. If you're just... <laughs> pray for my success. It will probably work, because I've, I already did it once, but then I... I like, reset my, uh, my, 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 my non-emulator, um, <laughs> sorry, and, um, yeah, they just disappeared, so it's fine, I'll, 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 I'll figure it out, eventually, but yes, even to the lurkers, thank you so much for being here, I appreciate it, so, yeah. Bye, guys.